Booyah. So what are we saying about tarantula hawks? <laughs> tarantula hawk wasps. Yeah, right. they're that, like they're that big fucker that Maynard yeah. sent me. So this is one of the. There's a guy who made a scale, right? And he got stung by all the different insects. And this is, I think, five. There's also a five plus. They're very hard to get you to sting them. There's a guy who online goes through and gets them all stung. But the reason they're so dangerous or, or, or so venomous, what they do is they sting the tarantula, lay their eggs inside the tarantula, and then the tarantula is eaten alive by the offspring for right. weeks. Right. And then when this was discovered, this kind of stuff in the Middle Ages, they were like, this is a big theological dilemma because God, why would God make this happen? Yeah, why would God do that? Nature is, I mean, I could go down this rabbit hole for hours. Please do. Yeah, I mean- Have you seen that gigantic flower that they found that smells like shit? So one of the, uh, one of the cousins to that flower is called something Infantacida. So the insane thing about that flower, Rafflesia, it's the largest flower in the world. It only lasts two weeks. Yeah. But the plant- It's a parasite. Right. So the plant that it comes from has no- stems, roots, or leaves. Yeah. So you can't keep it on display because it is entirely inside another uh, species of vine. Yeah, it's completely parasitic, right? Yeah. It just, it just sits there and it's fucking huge. Look at that thing. Yeah, and they smell. Uh, they sm- they're they called corpse flowers because they smell like rotting flesh too. How weird. And they don't know why it's so big. I guess to trap rats. That's what I would imagine. No, it does. it's, it's not carnivorous. It's the flower. It's getting sneaky. Yeah. So. They're adapting, bro. That's what it is. <laughs> they get ready to eat people. <laughs> Look how big they are. They're gorgeous. They are beautiful. Oh, wow. Look at that one where the guy's got his hand on it before it blooms. Yeah, yeah. So that's what it looks like sitting on the ground, and then it pops open. That's some fucking avatar shit right there. So I have something from the island of Socotra, which is an archipelago near the coast of Yemen, called Duvalyandra, D-U-V-A-L-I-N-D-R-A, and their flowers look and smell like meat Whoa. because you want to attract flies. And oh, the cool. hotter... It gets in the house, the more the flower smells. Ooh. It's really cool when you get it to so bloom. So it's actually heat activated just like rotten food would be. Yeah. And Whoa. to trick the flies because flies are going to be attracted. There it is. That yeah. is bananas. There, number wow, seven. That one so just beautiful. right there, Jamie. You see that in, this, in the second, the third one on the left. There, that's it. You can look at the texture. Wow. And it even has hairs to replicate a wound. Ugh. <laughs> It it's, looks like a blown out butthole. Yeah. But from an alien. Oh, there like, is a butthole. Look but- at the th- little, little dot in there. Oh, there is a butthole that smells like shit. If you look up white slonia, white, S-L-O-A-N-E-A, it smells like an asshole and has hairs that wriggle in the wind. Oh, jeez. And it's it, to replicate an asshole. To, um, uh, sorry, what was that again? A, uh, W-H-I-T-E-S-L-O-A-N-E-A, white slonia, named after white and slone. It's from Somalia. Oh my Yeah, look god. at those flowers. Oh god. How weird. Just the the sheer variety. And that smells like a butthole and has hair on it. Yeah, and the hair moves. My friend calls it God's mistakes. But it, with the sheer variety of nature, so weird. Isn't it great? I mean, we're just I mean, that's not unusual. If an asshole's not unusual and every animal has an asshole why is it unusual to have a plant that looks like an asshole and we have the expression you, you attract more flies with honey, honey. than vigor but it's, it's also like like a pig to shit a fly to shit you're gonna have right. flowers that smell like shit yes and there's a lot of them there's a whole family of them and they're gorgeous yeah like they smell and when they pop open they fart it's like a fart because it's contained and then it pops open oh so like the gases come out of it when it pops open yeah it releases a dose yeah, look up uh, the biggest one, Stapelia, S-T-A-P-E-L-I-A. Are there any plants that have the same effect on people that like, um, you know that one, well, not it's not even a plant, actually, it's a fungus. So there's one s- branch of the cordyceps mushroom that infects ants and gets them oh, to explode. Them insane. Yeah. So that they sp- spray the spores everywhere. They die. It grows inside of them, then literally explodes out into the air so the spores will infect other ants. Well, so when ants find out that one of their members is dead, been infected they'll take that ant way out of the community like wait they'll take them on a walk yeah because they know somehow or another that this thing's going to blow up on all their family they took they had found footage of this and literally like the mushroom grows out of the ant's head and then yeah. it pops out it's, yeah it's there's a lot of things that they're learning now about nature controlling the minds of other beings which yes. is really a recent kind of discovery and like really fox news <laughs> right <laughs> Yeah. Fox News, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> That's more like phone news. <laughs> am I right? 
yeah, that that sort of um, parasitic relationship. We one of my favorite ones ever was the um, the grasshopper that gets infected by this aquatic worm. The aquatic worm gets it to commit suicide so that it can give birth to this worm. It literally gets into the wiring of the grasshopper's brain and convinces it to jump into a puddle. What about the louse that eats fish's tongues oh, yeah. and then becomes a functional tongue? And becomes the tongue. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. So there's there's a lot of this this kind of crazy stuff. I My understanding is the majority of species are actually parasitic. Really? Yeah, There's because it's so much easier to be a parasite. You latch on, you're getting mm-hmm. nutrition, you don't got to do anything, and you don't have to hunt, you don't have to graze, and you're just set. Well, that's all also just obviously parasitic. If you want to think about it, most organisms are semi-parasitic right. in that we need other organisms in order to survive. You know, like if you're a farmer, I don't want to say you're a parasite if you're a beef farmer. There's a headline, kinda, beef farmers are parasites, <laughs> says Joe Rogan. 2020 is going to be I mean, a tough year. You're kind of living off that organism, Well, right? yeah. And but the other thing is, if every species has several parasites, think how many we have lice and, oh, yeah. and mites. It makes sense that the majority are going to be parasitic. Well, even at the micro level, you get down to our gut. Oh yeah, all, all the the different bacteria that's on your skin. I mean, we're filled with stuff. Yeah, it's it's really fascinating how clever uh, many of these organisms are. Yeah, it's a trip. It's a weird thing to be a person, my friend. <laughs> right? I, I wouldn't know. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's, it, but it's just also weird how we're finding out things that are even crazier and crazier. Like right now, they're doing a lot of deep sea exploration, and the things at the bottom of the ocean are just like, what is this? You saw that deep staria thing, mm-hmm. the the jellyfish that looks like a lava lamp. Yes. So it's yeah. just like, what is yeah, this? Yeah. Pull pull up that fucking thing. Yeah, deep staria. Yeah, there's a, a, that's a, that's one of the more amazing things about the bottom of the ocean, right? Is a bioluminescence. We see oh, these, yeah. these creatures that have a light source. They well, give off light. Well, there's also dragonfish use a red light source because red doesn't show off, show up for others, so oh they can see God. with it, but no one else can. It's like night oh. vision. Oh, yeah, oh, this is the one. So crazy. You saw this? Yeah. This is just amazing. Oh, it's that's so pretty. cool. And this, so pretty. And what's amazing is how they're freaking out. The scientists are watching it. They're like, "What is going on?" Oh, I love this thing. Look at that thing. And it also has a parasite on it or a symbiotic relationship. There's a copepod living inside. A resident isopod? Yeah. Is that what that is? Yeah. Oh, fuck, look how pretty that is. Now, this thing has never seen light for millions of years. It's the bottom of the sea. <sighs> so the fact that it knows how to react is, or is having a reaction is, is uh, um, uh, pretty cool. Just the fact that that's a real thing. That exists. If we found that on a planet somewhere, we'd freak out. This is the overlord. This is the overmind of the planet. And it's in a gelatinous form and it communicates to you with vibrations. This is why um, my autism wouldn't let me watch Star Trek as a kid. Uh, because I knew about all this stuff. And then I'm watching Star Trek and they're going to another planet. It's like a guy with a blue face. And I'm just like, th- this no, makes... This is stupid. It's just a it, guy. It's just a guy. Whereas yeah. look at Earth. Look at this. Right. Look at an octopus. Yeah. Look at that. You've seen the video of the octopus taking out the seagull? Oh, yeah. What about the blanket octopus? Do but you know then, what's those? interesting, though, is they saved an eagle. An octopus took out an eagle in Vancouver an Island. Eagle? Yes, an eagle. And the fishermen pulled it ashore and removed the octopus from the noble eagle. But a seagull, they were like, yeah, sorry, it. bitch. That's a wrap. Well, they're nasty. They're thieves. Well, they are thieves, but I think yeah. that- uh, And they smell. Eagles are thieves too. That's we were true. talking about a company that has uh, raised organic chickens that lost two point two million dollars in chickens to eagles. <laughs> they they wow. killed one hundred sixty thousand eagles. Oh or excuse God. me, the eagles killed one hundred sixty thousand chickens. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. So here it is: the octopus caught a bald, the bald eagle. eagle. Why does that octopus yeah. hate America? Well, he doesn't. He's in Canada. Huh? Bald eagles live in Canada too. They're expats. They go over there to party and to have sex with underage they, eagles. They were draft dodgers. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> they, there's no rules up there in that wild land to the north. But look at that. They decided to save the fucking thing. Isn't that weird? Oh, my God. Wow. If you're going to save it, I think you should eat the octopus, too, because you win. Yeah. The crew estimate the octopus could have been as large as 4.5 feet. Good. Everybody gets to eat. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of meat. Don't let it go. Don't let it go. There's plenty of them things. Jack that fucker. Get lunch. It's, and it's only got a year-long lifespan anyway. Does it? Oh, yeah. You know the octopus life cycle? That big? Oh, yeah. It only lives a year? Yeah. Oh, I definitely would have eaten it then. <laughs> yeah. With zero remorse. <laughs> zero fucks. I would have been zero remorseful if I found it only lived a year. And yeah. like, look at him. He's got to be 11 and a half months. And they, they don't really feel pain. They can, can cannibalize themselves. 
Well, they let their that. arms go when the female octopus tries to eat them. Yeah, yeah. Female octopuses, this is one of my favorite parts about the, the animal kingdom. They pretend sometimes that they want to have sex with a male octopus, then they just jack them and eat them. What about the cuttlefish where they pretend to be female so they oh, can yeah. get laid? Yeah, they're like beta males that are male feminists. Yeah. They pretend to be something that They pretend they're female. They pretend to be female. And then they fuck the females they when the male's not looking. They have female mannerisms and characteristics mm-hmm. just like these beta males. And they sneak up next to him as an ally and it's get, like, the, get their rocks off. It's like every Washington Post reporter in, <gasps> mo- in mollusk form. You said that, Did not I? me. Well, you're the one who said that farmers are parasites. But you do have a, a, you have an excuse because you claimed autism, which is a good move. <laughs> yeah. <You're laughs> That's why you should listen to me about climate change also. Yeah, you're already fi- – right. <laughs> I was saying that earlier, first podcast, that a friend of mine – who actually used to work with autistic kids, thinks that girl is autistic. She is autistic. She says it. It's on her Twitter bio. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. I didn't know. That's how little I've, I'm paying attention to the news these days. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, so happy. So we should definitely listen to the 16-year-old college high school dropout about science. So she is autistic. It says that on her, it says, I am autistic. Yeah, Asperger's, which is plus, not a diagnosis anymore. I am autistic, plus how dare you? Yeah. Si- 17-year-old climate change environmental activist with Asperger's. Oh. Was that always there with Asperger's? Yes. Really? So my most successful tweet ever was I said there's- How many tweets, how many, excuse me, how many followers does she have, Jamie? Only six, what? Four million almost. 3.91 million. Yeah, yeah. Those are rookie numbers. You got to bump that up. Uh, My biggest ever tweet, I said, there's no one more privileged than the girl who refuses to go to school until everyone on earth changes the weather for her. And then people are like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, (laughs) okay, here's the rule. Weather- is when it contradicts your bullshit. Climate is when it supports your bullshit. Because it's our weather, it's climate. Okay, right, right, gotcha. Go back to that first video that, that's on our page, the pinned video. See it there? Can you play that? I want to hear what she has to say. Oh, God. Super important. Fridays for Future, the school strike continues. This is in September. She was striking from school. On school strike for the climate. She's on school Every strike Friday, for the climate. We will sit outside the Swedish Parliament until Sweden is in line with the Paris Agreement. We urge everyone to do the same wherever you are. Sit outside your Parliament or local government building until your nation is on a safe pathway to able okay, to. Okay, pause it. She's got a beautiful voice. Does she? I like it. Okay. Nice music behind it too. I do. Yeah. It's soothing. I feel like we're all going to work together and stop this thing, it's, Michael. It's a very brave new world. Well, we better stop this thing. Because no, not her. <laughs> oh, okay. No, the climate. Oh, the climate's bad. Let's stop the climate. Gotta, first of all, they are, the, the, the Nazis are lighting the rainforest on fire <laughs> so that they can make more cows. So and, you need to go vegan. And also Australia. Yes. Australia. Do you know um, Tim Poole tweeted a statistic about the Australia fires? See if you can find it. Was it was like 500 a, million a, animals. Yeah. Well, that's one horrific statistic. But he his statistic was... I believe on the number of people, I'm pretty sure it was Tim Pool. I might be wrong now, I'm second guessing myself. The number of people that actually intentionally set those fires. Wow. Yeah, that th- there's not just one fire. There's many, 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 many fires, and there's n- not just accidental fires. There are fires that were set on purpose, and not a small amount of them. Like a significant percentage of these fires were set intentionally. Why, to just clear ground? Assholes. Oh, okay, that's literally. despicable. Yeah, literally, assholes that probably never knew that it could get this crazy. A big problem with that is Australia, there's many species that only live there. They're endemic there. And Australia won't let them be exported. So you don't have breeding colonies of platypus or echidna everywhere else. So when something like this happens, it's really disproportionately bad. Yeah, they were saying that koala bears are functionally extinct. But they, then no, but then we Googled that and they, they were refuting that, right? Weren't they, Jamie? Well, they're having this cancer, which is contagious, and they're pissing themselves to the bone. Like, it's really, really bad what's oh, happening Jesus. to them. Yeah, and I don't understand Koala how cancer, yeah, I don't understand how cancer could be contagious, but oh, it's well, spreading right. venereally, yeah. I read about that on, or I, I, I listened to that, rather, on a Radio Lab podcast. Yeah. It was the only form of cancer that they had ever recorded that was contagious. It makes no sense. But, so crazy. Yeah. And all they eat is eucalyptus trees, right? All these yeah. a one kind of leaf. And they also have the smallest brain to body proportion of any animal. They don't know why. They're violent when you fuck them. Though. Oh, yeah. Violent. Are, you try to fuck them? I've never tried to fuck a koala. I don't know why I say that. Are, but no, they, are they they're nasty? Really, no. They, they're, well, they're wild animals and they're sure. brutal during the mating process. Right. Like a lot of kids have been like severely traumatized watching koala bears rape other koala bears. Uh-huh. And you're like, oh, no. Pandas apparently too. Well, also cats. So kids, you know, oh, it's yeah. always rape, and wow. he slices, but he slices her up with the barbs wow. on his dick. Wow. 
they make noises that you're like, what in the fuck is happening she's outside my bedroom door? <laughs> she's being raped with a knife. Oh, yeah. Cuts her up inside, yes. right? And seals wow. her up. Yeah. Wow. And he's also biting her neck. Yeah. Like sharks. And they go to war sometimes, too. They fucking fight and claw each other and shit. Well, then he, they also kill the kids so that she'd get uh, uh, her period again. Cats do that, too? Yeah. Lions, all, all felines. <sighs> I didn't know kitty cats did that. They have that uh, gland on the roof of the mouth, the males. So they'll make that face, and then they're smelling if it's their kids. Oh, that they're doing that with their mouth? Yes. Whoa. They yeah. can smell if it's their own kids? Yes. That is fucking bonkers. But that's just amazing that like, okay, do I have to kill these children so I can rape their mom? You know who else does that? Who? Dolphins. Dolphins? Dolphins. Do what? They kill the kids? Infanticide. Yeah. Really? I didn't yes. know that. That's why female dolphins are severely promiscuous. Because the severely, kids are always getting killed. Because they fuck everybody, then you're not going to kill her kids because you don't know whose kids right. they are. Right. You don't have uh, Maury Povich in the ocean. <laughs> There's no, it's just all guesswork with dolphins. So he's like, damn, I have been fucking her a lot. That is a cute kid. Well, just leave, leave that kid alone. Because uh, when a female uh, dolphin has birth, apparently she's not willing to mate until her baby is uh, viable or until okay. it's, it's independent. And I think that takes like six years. So they don't fuck for six years. And the, doll, the male dolphins are like, fuck that, you don't. But they, and they'll kill the baby. Aren't they the only other group that uh, mates for pleasure or has sex for pleasure? No, for sure, chimps. You oh, yeah, you know bonobos, that. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, I don't know what other animals do it. How many, I would want, we should Google that. How many different animals mate for pleasure? I think it's bonobos and maybe dolphins and Dolphins humans. definitely seem to do it. Humans, I hear do it. I don't, I, mean, I don't understand why they wouldn't want to mate for pleasure because then you're getting laid more. I guess you don't want to get laid too much and then you can't carry the kids. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then there's not enough resources. I mean, I yeah. think that when you think about um, things like deer, it ha I mean, there's a reason why they only fuck once a year and yeah. there's so goddamn many of them. Imagine if deer fucked every day, it'd be a plague. Pleasure. Pleasure. Pigs, okay. Look at those Look at those chimps fucking. That's crazy. They're doing it missionary style. Huh. And they're looking at each other in the eye. And he's like, I'm going to give you this good dick. That could be rape. That I could think be... that's the guy on the bottom, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Yeah, I look at the guy on the bottom. That's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a guy. Yes, other no, animals. Have... No, it's a guy on top. So how many animals does it say? Humans, pigs, we guess them all. bonobos, dolphins, and one or two species of primates. Oh, so it's only primates. Yeah, we guessed them. So it's only animal, but pigs. We Interesting. Guess pigs. pigs. Yeah. Hmm. Pigs are smart as fuck, man. That's true. They're the, also responsible for the most farm deaths. Is that true? Yep. How so? Like Animals. charging people? No, they eat people. People fall in no. and the pigs eat them. Oh, yeah. Didn't you ever see Snatched? What's that? I don't even know what that is. Brad Pitt, you piece of shit. What the <laughs> fuck, man? Well, well this started off. Guy Ritchie <laughs> movie, Snatched. <laughs> okay. You don't know Snatched? I, I'm a piece of shit. Why would oh, I know Is this Snatched? It's snatched? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not Snatched. Oh, you don't know. Snatched oh, who's the piece of shit now? Who's That's, the piece of shit now? My, it's my, 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 my apologies. That's a uh, porn parody, Snatched. Uh, it's based on the same storyline. <laughs> will, will I be able to follow it if I haven't watched Snatch? But the guy, there's a, a gangster, a really great character in the movie Snatch. There's this British guy with these giant Coke bottle glasses who's a fucking murderer. And he talks about pigs, about how you could get rid of bodies with pigs. Oh, they did that in the Hannibal movie? Yes, yes. Apparently it's, it's all because of, well, there's a reality to it, but also because there was a serial killer that lived in British Columbia, that guy. He's fucking great. Brick Top was his name in the I movie. I love his Who, glasses. Oh my God. You never. Can we play a segment of that? No, we can't. We'll get pulled. Oh. Okay. Um, too bad. <laughs> but the guy's fantastic. What is the guy's name, that actor? He's fucking fantastic. Like, he's not an actor. Like, while he's doing it, you're like, that guy's a gangster and he's really killing people. He's really feeding them. What is his name? Alan Ford. That guy's a fucking beast. He's in a lot of things. Dude, isn't he's he? so good in that movie, though. He's so so good as that evil uh, gangster. I mean, you buy it hook, line, and sink. It's a great movie. Okay. You never seen that movie? Uh, no, dude. I love Guy Ritchie movies. I love those English gangster movies like Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking like barrels. barrels. Yeah, I love those movies. Got a new one on the way. Did you see it? What called The Gentleman with uh, Matthew McConaughey plays like a millionaire weed dealer in London or some shit yes. like that. Seems like it's just right out like a yes. sequel. Yes, can't wait. Beautiful. I'm excited. I love his movies. Okay. I'm not a big movie guy. What do you do for fun? Um, count numbers and shit? <laughs> count numbers. <laughs> okay. We're going to break this down. What does that even mean? 
<laughs> means you're talking about being autistic. <laughs> so like three? They all sit around like number people. <laughs> fucking Rain Man and shit, right? He doesn't have to count. Oh, he does that's all the, the time. It's the opposite. He sees the toothpicks and he knows how many there are. You've got to count them to know how many there are. No, that's the if point. It's he, get, it. he gets it instantaneously. Not things, nonsense. You Look, know? two cans. It's like some superhero powers. Four, four bottles. Did you do you uh, do you follow superhero movies or TV shows? You seem uh, like you would. Uh, I I'm a no com- offense. Uh, there's a comic book written about me, so I am a. Com- Whoa! You knew this. I did. Harvey P. Carr from American Splendor. He wrote a graphic novel. Oh, about that's me. right. We did talk about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So I am a comic book character. I do you I, like other comic books though. Yeah, I was a huge comic book fan for a long time, um, and I was just went to uh, some cool comic stores here in LA. There's some great ones like that indie stuff. The problem is a lot of it's really pretty but the writing is crap oh and then you read it, you're like eh, this isn't that it's good. hard to get both it's hard to get both yeah do people do, is there comic books indie comic books where it's like one guy writes it and draws it yeah that's the point they all it's always that case right oh. the art, but then you don't want the artist you know drawing it and then it gets like are there are anybody who does that well where they draw it and write the stories and do it well yeah adrian tomine does it better than anyone Pull I up think. Some of his shit. is it a girl or a guy guy Okay. Uh, Dan Klaus. Didn't want to be a piece of shit. <laughs> that ship has sailed. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but Adrian is, a t- I mean, I know both, both yeah. sides. He's, I know guys I and girls. Best. It's called Optic Nerve. Um, Dan Klaus is, is amazing. Uh, I'm blanking out their names, but there's a lot of real, real talents. There yeah. it is. It's very hipster. Mm, but it's, it's good in the best way. Yeah, good writing, good drawing. Very, yeah, very emo. Um, I don't see any superheroes, bro. What kind of comic <laughs> is this? Does anybody have magic? Or is there a dragon involved, or an, at least an alien? What? This is just emo. Everyone's crying. <laughs> Get this off the screen. What <laughs> word does he say to stop crying? What magic <laughs> word does he change from being a crybaby to real man? Did you watch The Watchmen? No. Did you see The Watchmen? Uh-uh. Didn't Alan Moore like denounce it very vociferously? Why did he do that? I don't know. I watched one he's a quick difficult person. screen of it, and I was like, damn, Dr. Manhattan looks like a normal person. No, he's got to look like a god. Yes. He's got to be jacked. Yeah, there was- right? the, Dr. Manhattan is supposed to be fucking jacked. The guy- like The Rock yeah, jacked. The guy yeah. who played him uh, in the movie got run over and killed <gasps> at a young age, the fitness actor. Yeah, that yeah. Guy that guy, he's dead. No. Yeah, it's How old sad. was he when he died? 30. 32? A 15-year-old ran him over? Is that what you said? No, like a train or something. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, see, that. so he was a fitness guy? Is yeah, that he was. What he fit- was? Greg Plitt, that was his name. Let me see a picture of that again. Let me get my pants off. <laughs> that's uh, See, that's what Dr. Manhattan's supposed to look right. like. He's supposed to look ridiculous, like a super person. Because he's a god. Yes, he's god a god. God on earth, yeah. Yeah, and he's glowing and blue. But now go to the new Dr. Manhattan. The new Dr. Manhattan is like, hey, you're, um, you're just a guy who maybe does CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Doesn't have the like, bun see, and the burger. See, look at his body. I mean, it's okay. He's definitely in good shape. Like, if he was playing a boxer, you'd be in it hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. But as Dr. Manhattan, you're like, hmm. No, I know, that's not he's not, doesn't look inhuman. My friend was like, yeah, and they also made him a black guy. I go, dude, he's blue. Yeah. So I don't know what the fuck's wrong with you. Weren't they complaining about Will <laughs> Will Smith being the genie for some reason? Yes. People complain about everything. Although I do have to tell you, I went to see Frozen, the musical, because <laughs> okay. I have daughters. Sure. So I went to see Frozen. First of all, it was at the Pantages. It's a wonderful production. It's excellent. It's really good. I mean, I actually enjoyed the the, the musical. It's very good. However. Um, it's about people that live in the Arctic, or they, they live in the Nordic country, right? Right. That's what it's supposed to be about. There are all these blonde people, white people. Well, the dad's black in the, in the musical, and the mom's Chinese. Yeah. Okay? And then the dad's black and the mom's Chinese, which is great. They're and, great actors. And white. Then they have kids. Who are okay, Eric. and the kid, one of the kids is Chinese, and one of the kids is white. And then the kids grow up, and they're both white. Wait, the Chinese like, girl becomes oh, yes. white? The Chinese girl becomes white, and there's no explanation given at all. The Chinese girl's little. She's Chinese. or I, I should say Chinese. I'm a piece of shit, and I'm, there's a terrible thing to say. I meant to say Asian. Ch- you meant Chinaman. Uh, no, I she's didn't. A, she's I a little did. Chinaman. She's a girl. She's a Chinaman old. girl. She was a, I don't know if she's Chinese. She was a young Asian girl, did she and make, she became a white girl. Did she make pee-pee in your Coke? That's how you know. Uh, she was great at her job. I mean, she had perfect uh, singing and everything was beautiful. The pr- they're, they're, they're very talented, but they're requiring you to make this leap. Like now you have to know that this is now a different 
ethnicity. Yeah. This is a different person. Well, like, not just a different person, but you can't even pretend that it's the same person. Like in most movies where you have someone plays a young version of the guy, it looks like the guy. It's not like you have a young Chinese guy who becomes Clint Eastwood. <laughs> you're like, hey, what are we doing here? Like, what are we making? If you have a young Clint Eastwood, he's supposed to look like who could be right. a young Clint Eastwood. They were even, I talked about this in my last book, then you're right. They were even complaining there was a video game that takes place in the Middle Ages, very popular. Maybe you guys know the name, and I'm blanking on it. And they were complaining that there weren't enough black people there. Because everyone on Twitter and, and Facebook still thinks they're in the 60s, and this is their personal march on Selma, and they're fighting against segregation. I'm like, this isn't segregation, this is history. Yeah, you can't. If you want to watch, make a movie about Egypt, right? You should use people that look like they're Egyptian. Yes. If you just decide you're going to just have only white people from Norway play Egyptians, people are going to want to kick your ass. The and that's kind of the same thing. You're fucking with reality. I'm not saying with Frozen, but sure. with a, with a movie like or any historical depiction, anything where you're like depicting an actual time. You know, if you want to have like like the Wild West, you want to do a movie about the Wild West. You have to have European settlers, you have to have some African slaves, sure. and you have to have a lot, of, a lot of Native Americans. You can't just decide, we're going to do a film about the Wild West, but everyone's black. Y the, Indians <laughs> black. the Indians are black, cowboys are black, all black crew, all black writers, black power, we're going to make it happen. Like yeah. You can't, if you did that movie, people would be like, wait, 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 wait. Are there slaves? Yes. Okay, so the black people have slaves? Yes. I, my favorite comic book series of all time was Legion of Superheroes, right? And I it takes place in the 30th century. And I was 30th just the, century. 30th century, oh. thousand years from now. I was just in the comic book store. They just keep rebooting it. Number two just came out. And I was looking at the cover. You have Chameleon Boy, who's orange with antennae. Brainiac 5, who's green and a living computer. Shadow Lass is blue. But they had to make Lightning Lad black for some reason now. Mm. It, it's just like these are 40 diverse aliens. Some of them don't even have a body. But they have to change the race just to it, – it's, it's just really kind of, a, uh, I guess, the thing you do. And in, stay woke. But in retrospect, it's going to be embarrassing. Do you not know about staying woke? I, I'm very familiar. Do you stay woke at all? I, I never sleep. Do you ever think about, like, trying to be, like, a little more woke and people like you better? You ever think of that? No, I don't think they would like me better. I think they might. If you might maybe give in a little bit. How can you like me better? It's, you were already <laughs> at 11. <laughs> I'm the pride of America. <laughs> this style's not going up. It's such a strange time, man. But it's always a strange time. I it think is, now yeah. what makes it good is that this can be called out and discussed and be like, look, this isn't about race or racism. Why is it important to you yes. that this Chinese girl in Frozen grows up to become white? Like, just explain yes. this to me. I should say they did a great job. Like, everybody was awesome. It was it does not in any way sh I enjoyed it. It didn't take away from my enjoyment. It was a very good musical. It did take away because no, you're no, just no, like I enjoy your... it more. <laughs> I it's... enjoy it more because I it's saw the wokeness. Stop provoking. I saw they did some woke shit. I was like, I see what you're doing. Not to say that the Asian lady wasn't fantastic as the mom. She was the the, the black guy as the dad. He was amazing. But you want me to believe that a black guy made it with an Asian lady. They made two blonde kids, and one of them started out Asian and then became European later. We don't so. know that he. We don't know that he was their dad. <laughs> Yes, we do. It's How? part of the script. But they, they, go they to describe their parents. They, they, they have children. The, yeah, the but children grow. She, yeah. you don't know if she's hoeing around. No, she's not hoeing around because if she is, she's hoeing around with a goddamn chameleon because the child morphs as it gets older. It becomes oh. a different race. <laughs> okay, they yeah. changed races of the same person, the same character. Yeah, but the point is it's still not going to happen that a, a, a black guy and a Chinese person are going to have a white kid. So maybe the Chinese right. lady had Both sex with the white crazy. guy. Could be. Could be. Could be he's a cuck. Yeah, it could be frozen refers to the sperm that was unfrozen. <sighs> Good point. It's Maybe. just amazing that Disney is – people think corporate America is very conservative, but they're the first ones to be pushing this stuff. I remember I was in Times Square in New York, Pride Month, rainbow flags everywhere. And I said, only corporate America can make sodomy and perversion look boring. <gasps> you son of a bitch. Am I wrong, though? You're a son of a bitch. Yeah, in a, in a way, yeah. How am I wrong? No, you're right. Oh, okay. No, I'm saying it, no. It's what just do you like, say? Am I wrong? I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> you're definitely wrong. No, it's uh, yeah, it's look. Do you remember when they had that 11 year old drag queen? Oh, the Desmond is amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were making this big deal about it. Yeah. And he's going to drag clubs and dancing around. They put it in the, the news like it was some this what a what a great thing, what a great thing. He's living his truth. He's so brave. Like he, imagine. If there was a 12-year-old that was just sworn to be a hoe, 
Like, I am a hoe. I'm just going to wear fishnets right. and high heels, and I'm going to stick my ass out, and I'm going to dance and pout around with a lot of mus- a lot of makeup on. How different is that? Well, he's also on the spectrum, I think. I'm 99% sure. Mm-hmm. So the, and there's photos of him with, there he is. with naked drag queens, Violet Chachki, And it's just like, look, this is something for... Well, what if there's like a little boy who's being a Chippendales? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's like, how is this appropriate for kids and and it's on good morning america it's different is there a bunch of ladies screaming and trying to get that dick well i mean that would be the equivalent right because he's performing at gay clubs and they're cheering him on that's a place where guys go to hook up with guys well here's the question too do you think guys have hooked up with him no oh i hope not oh let's talk you want to talk about this because this is a rabbit hole that i've been on recently oh boy you've been on the kids getting fucked rabbit hole yeah because i had a friend in october who sat me down and he's like, look, I was raped as a kid for a long time. Oof. And he only realized because of this show, because he was watching when Jake the Snake was on this show. Oh, my God. My friend Matt and everything Jake was saying, he's like, holy shit, this is me. And this really fucked him up for a while. And as he's talking to me and he goes, I can't even be mad because it was another older kid. And I know he was getting it worse than me. Oh. And the thing that's really fucked up is he didn't know how I was going to react. Right. So it used to be mommy's sleepy. No, mommy was a drunk. Right. And until Betty Ford, the first lady came out as an alcoholic. Now people like if you, someone says, oh, my mom's an alcoholic. You're like, oh, that sucks. But you don't think anything of them. Right. Right. If someone's if daddy had a temper. No, daddy was abusive. But we know what to do with that information. And when I started talking about this on Twitter and elsewhere, that this is really common. And because all of us do not think of kids in this way, we don't want to think about it. It's so sick. They're the ones who have to deal with this nightmare. Um, And it's really, really, everyone I've talked to knows someone. Mm. And I just told another friend when he's like, oh, yeah, my sister I just found out was being molested by our grandfather her whole life. (sighs) And then it's like um, she's the one who's acting out and we're yelling at her for acting out. (sighs) So, Joe, I, I mean, one of the things I wanted to talk about is this is something that has to change. These people can't be the ones who have to worry that if they tell me or your friend that we're going to look at them like, oh, you're a freak, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. Because they're the ones who are suffering uh, um, for a very long time. And I think that keeps people from speaking out because that fear of being labeled, like they'd, they'd almost rather keep it to themselves and not have other people know that they've been molested. You, they don't want to, for you to be uncomfortable around them. Right. And th- there was a girl in my high school. She told another girl that her brother had been raping her for years. And she went to mom. And mom says, you know what you're talking about. Oh my that God. can't happen. But this happens all the time. And we don't have the space to discuss it. Um, so I've just been kind of talking about this a lot more and encouraging people to talk about this a lot more. Because it's, there are really, really a lot of people who are suffering because of this. And what do you do? Here's the big question, something like that. What do you do to help the person who's been molested? And what, you do, what do you do to the person who molests someone? Well, the, uh, the person who did it, I, I, have, I, I can't even begin, I don't know. But I think what happens is just like with gay rights, right? The more people who come out and talk about it, the more easy it is for someone to call someone else and be like, this happened to me. You know what I'm going through. Let's have this conversation. Have you seen this very strange trend that's rare, but common enough and actually predicted where people are talking about people that are pedophiles, that it's some sort of a sexual inclination that we should have? Yeah sympathy for them because it's no di- it's nothing they asked for and it's no different than being born gay or being you it is just a thing where you're born in a way that is there any science to back that up at all i am perfectly happy to believe that people can be born with this inclination i don't care if i'm born with an inclination that i want to murder people well i better figure out how to deal with this yeah. you know what i mean right uh and i i think that's a complete in many ways, red herring. If it's something that they can't change, that does that makes it worse. That that means you you can't have no reason to even uh, exist. Or, too we, dangerous. Yeah. Right. You're like a cannibal that can only eat meat. Right. Like a vampire living amongst us. Right. Because and, instead of stealing souls, you're stealing someone's future. And and the thing about these types is they're very common. They're like any predator. You're going to be drawn to where the resources are. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be disproportionate in those. Uh, fields where you are interacting with your targets. Right. So that's what makes it so sick. It's not like you have these ideas. Okay, fine. You can have whatever ideas you want. You are laying those that groundwork, uh, you know, to prey on these kids, and you know what you're doing. 
Oof. It's it's and again, I, I I don't know what to do with this information, but I do know that this is really really bad. And you know, people talk about this is the truest form of being a victim there is. And the sickest part about it to me is how many of these kids go on to molest other kids. Yeah, it's it's a, like like a like a disease. Like they've caught a disease. I well, I told Matt that he should. There's two ways, right? They go on. I told Matt you should consider reaching out to this guy and telling him you forgive him because he's like because it's possible that you're like 10 or 11, you're doing this, you grow up and you realize what you've done and what this means. And I don't know how you could live with yourself. Right. It's, well, we have to hope and assume that it ended with that, that he didn't continue doing it as he get older and older right. with the same age child. Yeah, it's, it's and, and what's even worse, <laughs> what happens when it's within the family? Right, and it happens all the time. This happens, I talked to someone who's a former sheriff in the, when I was in the Midwest, and you know, this was his job to helping these kids. He goes, it is so much more prevalent than you think. And what happens yeah. is families, you know how back in the day you don't want to talk about divorce because yeah. it's shameful. I didn't even understand what they were ashamed of, whatever. And now it's like, oh, that's just crazy Uncle Nick. Keep him away from the kids. It's like, that's not a thing. Crazy that's Uncle Nick. <sighs> Yeah, there's too many of us already. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, like, even saying that, there's too many of us. We should kill pedophiles. Like, that's, it's, if you put that up, like, in a, in a real intimate situation, you were talking just a bunch of people that really cared about each other and were good friends. Like, I think we should kill pedophiles. They'd be like, fuck yeah. But well, most people would say yes. But I, in public, in public discourse, like, saying we should kill pedophiles, like, okay, but here's a problem. Sometimes people get accused of being pedophiles and they're not. Right. Like, you remember that school that uh, there was a uh, daycare school and these kids were actually being coached into saying, they were oh, little, yeah, yeah. little kids. It was a famous case. And that uh, it eventually the case all fell apart, but not before these people's reputations were ruined. Everything was ruined. Their business was shattered. All because these kids had made stuff up. And then other people had like coached them into making more stuff up. And then everything got crazier and crazier. What was the name of that? It was, it was a very famous case. I mean, they made a documentary about it because it shows almost like there's a mass hysteria that can go on, especially when you're talking about something that's particularly heinous, right? Like the ab abduction and or the uh, uh, rape of children, rather, because w we're all so scared of that being real that we'll pay attention as much as possible. So they have these news stories. They have all these different things that are attached to this. And then people keep probing and they keep asking questions. And then it accelerates and grows yeah. because it's a focal point of attention. But and people start lying. But we're also so scared so we don't want to think it could be true. And well, we don't want to think either one could right. be true. Right. That someone would molest kids or that kids would be coached into lying. But I'm Both much, of them are horrible. I'm much more concerned with people who are dealing with this and how they can get help. Yes, of course. No, of course. And I think that... But it, I'm saying that's why you can't kill them. Oh, oh yeah. I'm not advocating yeah. killing anybody. I'm just advocating for people. And I don't, I'm not a victim of this. I just have a friend. And again, everyone I've talked to knows someone. Yes. One degree of separation. Oh, yeah. And I'm just saying for the people who had gone through this, just like Matt listening to the show, I, I, this is what I told him. I, I, when I've, my experience, when people come to you in a vulnerable way, don't tell them what um, you, you think they want to hear. Be as vulnerable in return. Mm. So I said to him, I don't, Matt, I don't care. I don't think of you any differently. I don't think you're damaged. I don't think you're a freak. I think it's awful. I can't relate to this at all. I know you're glad I can't relate to this at all. Um, and I think it's great that you want me to kind of talk about this to ha stop someone from blowing their brains out. Yeah. Uh, this is, again, it's, it's, again, do you, are you like, it's hard for me and I have a much smaller audience than you to be aware of the reach of the show. Cause I'll get letters from people being like, oh, I'm going through chemo and I read your Twitter to make my day. And I'm like, I can't take pride in that. Cause I'm in my underwear being an asshole on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And that's independent of you kind of, you know, getting your laugh. So thank you, but it doesn't resonate. So for your level, I mean, this kind of saved my buddy's life because of Jake the Snake on this show. That's beautiful. And I'm very happy that that happened. Um, and that's a wonderful side effect. But if I thought about that only, it would never be the same thing. Okay. And the reason why I think the show works is c comfort like a comfort level and talking to people and, and having fun and enjoying it. And I think the moment you start thinking about your reach okay. and the amount of impact that it has and how many people are actually listening right. at the same time, you'll start freaking out and you'll never be as comfortable. 
You won't be comfortable. Like what people like listening to is people that like like you and I are friends. We've done yeah. this a few times. Yeah. I enjoy your company. Thank you. You know sir. I do. I'm a piece you of know shit. I think you're <laughs> this, come on, we're just jokes, pal. They're jokes. <laughs> but you know that I think you're a very funny and very smart Thank guy. You. And I enjoy your company. So when we're together, I'm like, this is great. I'm gonna sit down with Michael, we're gonna talk, we're gonna have a good time. It's yeah. gonna be fun. I'm enjoying this. Like that is what one of the things that people like. They like the fact that friends joke around and they're comfortable with each other and we can just change subjects and talk about anything. Yeah. And I think the moment you re you almost like have to hypnotize yourself to not look at the big picture. You have to sort of like just stay in the pocket. Stay in the pocket. Just be yourself. Just all this craziness is around you, like, uh oh, gotta get away from that. Go over this way. Yeah, yeah. But don't don't live in it. Yeah, every single time I leave this room, I'm like, oh shit, what did I say? Because ah! you can't be on for this long. I know, but me too, dude. Yeah. I've done thousands of them. Yeah. I mean, think about all the stupid shit I've said. There's no way around it. There's no, it's plus, plus 70% of the time I'm high. You know? <laughs> I mean, we got high as fuck the podcast right before this one. <laughs> so, you know, that doesn't, I've said some terrible, stupid things. Hi, and not even ex exactly sure what I'm saying while I'm saying it. I'm like, no, no, that's not what I meant. Fuck. Like, <laughs> It's have you, a fun way to do it, though. It's like a, you know, it's like skiing downhill, and you're not sure if you could stop. Have you tried the new ones, like Moxie and TX6 or something? What new weed? No, there's new types of like psychedelics. Oh, I don't you're know. over that shit. I don't need that. The stuff that's real is good enough. These people want to try something other than mushrooms. Like, what are you looking for? I, you, an acid's not strong enough for you. I don't think it. I, there's one that you could turn off. Oh, you turn it off. Yeah, like with a switch, like, like an app. No, like you know, like if you're drunk. You can kind of make yourself sober if you need to. So this is a psychedelic that you can switch off. Oh, what's really? it called? It's Moxie. <laughs> this Hold is on. Moxie. It's five M E O. Yeah, M I P T. What is it called? Uh, so Hold on. There's Moxie the and then Two C B is the other one. I've heard of Two C B from yeah. the Kanye song. Oh, oh, is that from the Kanye song? An okay. Analog of the more popular drug Five M E O D I P T. Foxy Mox. <laughs> Foxy Mox. Isn't that great? It's got an old timey name. I've never interesting. Done it. Foxy Methoxy is a great name. Hmm. So it's like, I guess, hipster mushrooms. You probably haven't heard of it. Well, they're always coming up with new things to avoid certain drug tests where they just alter a, a chemical right. just slightly. And it doesn't fit. That's where 5-MeO DMT was not qual classified as uh, one of the banned psychedelics in the 1970 Sweeping Psychedelic Act. And, and dimethyltryptamine was, was labeled. 5-MeO is DMT with an oxygen molecule attached to it, which eliminates some, I don't know exactly how it works, but the visuals are very different. It looks very different. It feels very different. It's way more potent, and it was legal forever. Like, you could order it in the year 2000s. We would get it from a fucking chemical company where you'd order it over the internet, and they would send you, like, an aspirin bottle of the shit, and you could literally put the entire city on the moon with that, astro uh, that, that little aspirin bottle. Oh, my God, that's amazing. It was so potent, and it's this white, pure powder that is, like, straight from this laboratory. Yeah, pharmaceutical grade. Pharmaceutical grade, yeah. not for human consumption, <laughs> 5-methoxy-dimethyltryptamine. And we, we took it, and it just puts you in the center of the fucking universe. You feel like you're a part of every cell and every atom and every neutron, every, everything. You're, you're part of everything. You're in the soup of it all. There's no detachment between you and things. Yeah, yeah. Everything just, whoa. You disappear for like 15 minutes. You're sure you're dead. You're absolutely 100% sure you're dead. And it probably is what happens when you die. And then you come out of it. You're like, what in the fuck? Like, I just got that from a company? I just ordered that with a Visa card? Like, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. This is pre PayPal. This was uh, you. You'd be able to just buy this stuff. Like there was a host of these different things. Like, um, do you remember uh, salvia? Oh, this, I was just talking about today. Is that still legal or not? I don't know. It's a good question because it's kind of fallen out of favor. It's not something that people talk about a lot. But when people found out that you could just get salvia from a head shop, yeah. like, head shops are supposed to be you can buy bongs, you can buy velvet posters, but there's nothing there that can get you fucked up. But then they started selling salvia because it was somehow another legal. And it is one of the most mind-blowing psychedelics known to man. For 10 minutes, yeah. It's fucking unbelievably yeah, yeah. powerful. Ari Shafir did some on a podcast, and he lived an alternative life for three months. He had a family, he had jobs, he had friends, and then all of a sudden, zhoop, he came back to reality. And he <laughs> was like, what I the love this. fuck? In an alternate reality, Ari yes. Shafir has friends. <laughs> he has his friends in real life. I'm one of his friends. But he had different friends that I didn't even know. He just went 
went into this place and lived another life. I think he was under the ocean too. <laughs> yeah, oh. there he is, right there. Oh wow! So he's gone, and he was getting and Red Band, of course, filmed it. And so he was, and he got very violent when he woke up too. Oh, like violent, violent? Yeah, like get the fuck away from me! It's everybody was fucking because it's disorienting. Yeah, he's confused because you're physically paralyzed. Yeah, so he was. He's like, get off me, get off me, Sam Tripoli. He's got his sunglasses on. It was chaos. Anyway, he um, he came wow. out of it, and he said that while he was out for ten minutes, he lived like three months in a different world. Jesus Christ. And then you have to wonder if that's the real one and this is the fake one. Ah! Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. That's what apparently when you would have the Catholic priest going down the aisle, waving, that would either be sage, which is, I think, a derivative of salvia divinorum. I think not a derivative. A cousin, maybe a close relative. I think sage and salvia divinorum are extremely close Okay. in terms of like uh, the genus. Genus? Genus, yeah. Genus. What's the genus for sage? I think it's real close. I think it's it's one of those things where they think that maybe people were burning that, but uh, they were probably also most definitely burning cannabis. And so they were wafting through the aisles with cannabis smoke, getting everybody secondhand high. Huh. Yeah, and that's it's one It's going to have the, that experience, yeah. Yeah, to take them into this fucking Catholic journey. You know, the guy's wearing a robe, just b- b- fucking this go- these stained glass windows everywhere. Like, oh, yeah. holy shit, and look at the, the epic structure. Yeah. Like, you're looking at these gigantic, beautiful artworks that they're calling buildings. Sage or salvia. Okay. All, All sages, sages are, are salvia. salvia. Wow. Over time, though, the term sage has been closely aligned with cooking or a medicinal use, and the term salvia has been given to more ornamental members of the genus. Genus. Yeah. Nevertheless, salvia is the Latin name or genus given to all these plants. Yeah. So sage is salvia. So salvia and divinorum, this incredibly potent psychedelic, is common sage. Wow. Or close enough, or basic for Somewhere, all types of purposes. Yeah. yeah, in the neighborhood of it. And yeah. it's, a, it's like a mix of acid and uh, wheat. Yeah, for look 10 at those minutes. guys. <laughs> Tripping balls, son! Those guys are walking around with salvia, blowing salvia smoke. Like, that's not a coincidence, man. They could have picked fucking cedar bark. <laughs> right. like, they chose keep, keep them to take way. some super potent psychedelic and waft it through the air as they're walking back and forth. Well, there's also that theory that the Salem witch trials are because they're all eating ergot. Yes, from the and bread. They're all, and they're the all late tripping. frost. Yeah, or early, yeah early frost. Yeah, they, they, that that apparently is a really good one. Like they they really think that that really could have been it. Like, well, they also there's a book called The Oracle about the Oracle of Delphi, right? And she had these visions and she would prophesy the future. And they went there and they found that they found her stool. She was sitting her over her poo or her stool that she sat like a, on. It's got three legs to it. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I thought uh, it like an animal. <laughs> got a cop, what's stool it called? Sample. Cop, copro. What's the thing for dinosaur poo? Fossilized copper or something? Oh. Um, they, they, you can get those. Um, you buy it? dinosaur poo? Yeah, fossilized. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's she. So they found she was sitting over a crack Whoa. with natural gas coming out. So she's getting high off of whatever that is. Oh, no shit. So there was natural gas leaking out through the ground where she was partying. Yeah. So of course she's going to be speaking gibberish and, and having all these visions because she's getting... It's like... It's like not like... like um. Like uh, when you what's with the when you inhale the yeah um, yeah, yeah. And laughing gas huffing. when you go to the huffing, the huffing, huffing. yeah oh nitrous oh, it totally makes sense yeah I think that's probably a lot of these cases of course wacky things that people did I mean it only makes sense I mean they they never did figure out what soma is in the the ancient Hindu, Hindu is that right yeah. Yeah, they, they think it might have been some kind of psychedelic, but they don't know what. Like, there's all this different speculation. Like, some people think it was accommodatory, that it was, uh, it was like, psilocybin mixed with something else, and lotus flower. There's all these, like, different, different theories, but nobody really knows. But Soma was obviously something that they were taking as a sacrament that would have these profound effects. That's most likely the root of all of these crazy religious experiences. These people were tripping their fucking balls off, and they weren't lying. Like, God did come to them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, God did come to them out of the burning bush and spoke to them. And they, That's the other thing, the, the burning bush. They think that these uh, scholars in Jerusalem think that the burning bush is probably the acacia bush, which is rich in DMT. Oh. So that's probably why this is the, the metaphor, right? The, the burning bush and God spoke to them in the burning bush. That's probably what it really means. They were tripping, but they were smoking it, tripping balls, and they met God. And he came back with, this is the only way we're going to get along. We've got to stop raping each other. <laughs> and, and the other thing is a lot of these old mystery religions, right? You have to be initiated into them. Yes. And if you're going to join this 
cult or whatever, for lack of a better term, and they give you here, take this, you are going to experience something not only that no one ever that you've ever heard of, right? But like you don't even know how to handle it, yeah. And you, it's it's will change your life permanently. But there's no vocabulary for it there. It's not like now where you know what acid is. You're like, holy shit, this is religious, right? You th- you would think it's God. Yes. You met God, yeah. Unless well, it's bad, and then you meet the devil. You know about that guy, uh, John Marco Allegro? Do you know who he is? No. He's the guy who deciphered the Dead Sea Scrolls. Oh, okay. He worked on the, the panel for 14 years, and he wrote a ser- seriously controversial book. He was an ordained minister, but he was the only one on the Dead Sea Scroll translation com- group that they put together that was agnostic. Because he started studying, well, he was he was an ordained minister, but then he started studying theology, and he was like, this is all fucking crazy. Like, what is this? So he became agnostic. And he wanted to look at the etymology of the words. Okay. And so he, it was his conclusion after 14 years that the entire Christian religion was a gigantic misunderstanding. And what it really was about was psychedelic mushroom experiences and fertility rituals. Okay. And he broke down the word Jesus to an ancient word, that an ancient Sumerian word that means a mushroom covered in God's semen. And the idea was that... The, the rain, which would make everything grow, was yeah. God's come, and that it wasn't a bad thing. Like, they didn't think of come as bad. They wanted to live. Everybody wanted to, they wanted to have children. They wanted to prosper. Yeah. And that when the rain would come, mushrooms would appear almost instantaneously. Like, have you ever seen yeah, how mushrooms yeah, yeah. appear after it's, a day? Overnight, yeah. It's overnight. seconds, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and when they would eat those, they would trip their fucking balls off. So they had decided that this was Jesus. And that this 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 was what was God's son. Yes, right? God created this from His own seed. Well, this is what Marco Allegro's his research was pointing to. He was trying to say that what was really going on was these people were trying to hide a lot of what the psychedelic rituals are from the Romans and from the people that captured them. So they hid them in stories and parables. And then there was all sorts of problems in the translations. There's just like, you know, you're taking things from ancient Hebrew and you're breaking it down to Latin and you're breaking it down to German and English. And I can't, I can't believe he got a positive reception for this. If you're taking well, he on... Ne- didn't necessarily. He, uh, the book got bought out Okay. By the Catholic Church, and then recently reinstated, and then what do you mean bought uh, out? It they bought it. They like they. I think they took it off the market. I think you used to be able to only get a uh, copy of it. You used to only be able to get a um, like a, a used copy. Of okay. It. And then Jan Irvin put it out. He republished it like a few. I don't know. I want to say maybe eight, ten years ago. So now you can get a hold. But he also published another book after they took that one back. Well, I think, I, I don't know the, the total history of it, but he published a second book. And the, the second book was the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Christian Myth. And the first one was the Sacred Mushroom and the Cross. Wow. So, but it only makes sense. If you think about people who lived back then, and we know that psychedelic mushrooms aren't recent. They right, existed forever. Yes. Right? So if these people found them, and they most certainly did, yes. there's a lot of depictions of them. And there's also a lot of iconography and a lot of... Um, like, like you, you see shapes that resemble mushrooms like all over the place in some of the ancient artwork and even people that are dancing naked under the influence of a mushroom. So there's a translucent mushroom shape that surrounds them in these ancient paintings and these religious paintings, these people are dancing. So most likely they were tripping balls. Well, if you didn't know any better, of course you would think that's God yeah. talking to you. If you didn't know what psilocybin is, you didn't know what dimethyltryptamine is, you didn't know what any of these things are. Well, you're also going to hear voice, literal voices. Yes, literal so voices. So it's not even that you're like, it's not a metaphor. You're going to hear right. a voice talking to you. Right. So people that think that like these people who created religion were all liars, they're probably more likely trippers. Because if you look at all these religious stories, they're all crazy and weird and fantastical and wonderful. But- most of them are like guides to live life in a more virtuous or pious or moral way, right? That's what most sure. – mo- the tenets of a lot of these yes. religions. Well, that's what you get when you trip. You, when you, you trip, you, you get – you got to be a better person. Yeah. Okay, that's what yeah. you get. You get this like profound humili- uh, uh, humbling – I shouldn't say humiliation, but humbling in the face of this – titanic expression and, 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 and experience that you can't even describe with words and then after it's over you want to be a better person and there's also a sense of comfort yes. that it's going to be okay yes it's going to be which okay which is what religion 
traditionally gives a lot of people like the yeah. sense of reassurance that someone's looking out you're not going to accidentally you know go it's not even that it's a, you get a feeling that even if it's not okay it's okay R- right yes. like when you die it's okay like yeah that, when you trip balls like one of the things that larry hagman say remember larry hagman from dallas that remember is that guy? i will say dallas is probably the greatest show of all time great fucking show that is and people confused with dynasty which was trashy garbage dallas was one of <laughs> the great was, i think it's literally the best show of all time in my opinion. was his name jr what was his name? Ewing. Ewing. that's right well, he tripped balls and talked about it on CNN and said that it was one of the best experiences of his life because he no longer was afraid of death. That right? Before that, he was afraid of death. And the one thing that tripping, and tripping hard apparently, really did for him is that he no longer held that fear. And he had stared death in the face because of his alcoholism. You mm-hmm. know, he had to have a liver transplant or whatever it was. So it was no joke. Yeah. He was a huge alcoholic. He had a dope house that was for sale in Topanga. And unfortunately, I wasn't on the market for a house, but I would love to buy that guy's house. That show had, I think, the funniest line of all time, which is Victoria Principal, who's like the good, uh, was Pam, come into his office. She's the good guy, right? And she's yelling at JR, and he would look at her with a straight face, like he would never wink. And he, I, I'm going to get it backwards, or he goes, Pam, I've always thought you were stupid. I never made a, any you know, mistake about that, but I never thought you were crazy too. It was just like, <laughs> holy shit, total beast. He was a good bad guy. Yeah. He was one of the first bad guys on TV, like Tony Soprano type dudes oh, that yeah. you like, rooted for. Right. Because the show, the villain was Cliff Barnes. So it was about a evil person versus a bad, in, in the sense of low quality person. His enemy wasn't a good person. He was just this loser who was jealous of JR. So it was right. very smart to have bad versus evil as opposed to good versus bad. Yes. It was so good. Good fucking show. Yeah. Back in the day when there was only like five shows on TV. Yeah, five channel, four channels. If that... During JR? Wasn't that three? Three. It was three. Fox came later. Yes. No, no. I mean, it lasted from, what, 78 to 1990, I think. So Fox was around by then, but yeah. Yeah. Fox was around when I was in high school. Uh, That's what's crazy about The Simpsons. Simpsons was on from day one. It was so good. They're so great. You think it's watchable? Yes. It's like fan fiction at this point. I love it. You still watch it? Love it. Do you still watch it? If it comes on, I see it. I watch it. The rerun or the new one? Whenever's on. I'm not picky. Okay, I'm very picky. The old ones were amazing. The old ones were amazing. My favorite one ever was when Homer ate the uh, hot peppers well, that and went into that fucking dream. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, there's a shock twist. That's your favorite episode. I never saw that. I could have loved that. it. But the it chili so, pepper. Yeah. yeah, it was so off the charts weird. Have you ever done the ride at Universal? No, what's that? It's amazing. Wait, they have the Homer peppered ride they have a full-on virtual reality ride at universal studios based on the simpsons and is one of my favorite rides of all time okay it's fucking amazing yeah i'll give you some spoiler alerts okay the little kid becomes giant a lot of crazy shit happens explosions you're on a roller coaster it's nuts it's so fun it's so good okay it's so good so good okay it's psychedelic it's it's chaos it's and it's the simpsons that's uh, you never seen it? No. See if you can pull up a video of what it looks like to ride. I think it used to be the Back to the Future ride, didn't it? Oh, is that Did it? it? Mm, I think so. What? Well, it, it, they at least ran it the same way. I don't. They know just if, made Marty into Bart. If the thing like <laughs> maybe they have both there and they go back. I don't know. I'm just talking ass right, right now. I don't really I have no idea if that's true. Huh. But I remember the Back to the Future ride too. Now you're thinking about it. Apparently they just redid the uh, Jurassic Park ride too. It's supposed to be cool. But the Simpsons ride is amazing. It's so good. It's so good because it's all virtual. You're not going anywhere. You're sitting still, but you swear to God, you're in a you're on a oh, roller coaster those. and you're flying. Is it like one of those where the seat moves too and mm-hmm. shit? Oh, yeah. I love that shit. And you're you're in front of this massive high definition screen. Yeah, yeah. In, in, incredible graphics. Do you put and the glasses on too? I don't think you do. Oh, okay. I don't remember though. I don't remember. I did something I like that been in Orlando. In a it was years. really cool. The sh- the best one. The best one is. Uh, the Avatar one at Disney World. Okay. It's Flights of Passion. That's fucking incredible. That's n- so total next level. I saw some Disney dorks on YouTube reviewing like the new Star Wars ride that yeah. just opened up. They said it's v- very close to, if not maybe better than that. Woo-hoo! Wow. Which I don't, I don't know like what the ride was or what they did, but. Blasphemy. I'm sure it's good. It's supposed to be 20 minutes long too. Oh, okay. This new Star, Star Wars. This so is this, the- is, this is the Simpsons r- ride. Like a bunch of st- stuff happens okay. to you. Yeah, I'm gonna try to skip out of here. Um, you get into a car. That's what I mean. Yeah. The car oh. part was the thing. Yeah, that let was this like go. Back to the future. Let this. Go. Yeah, you play it here. So all this crazy shit is happening right in front of you, and you're. It's just fun. It's just. A, it's a really good one. Oh, dope. 
<laughs> it's really fun, dude. Oh, and it's coming right at you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're, 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 I'm sure the chair's shaking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Those you are so see. much fun. What was the other one we were just looking at? Oh, the Disney World yeah, Avatar Disney. ride. The Disney World Avatar ride, you, cl- you climb onto this thing that looks like a motorcycle. Okay. And then they put goggles on you, put this like, helmet in, strap you in place, little, literally lock your legs in place. And all of a sudden, you're on a dragon. And you're on a dragon in Avatar. And it's full. Oh, this is it. There it is. There's a dragon. Full HD virtual oh, reality. Wow. You get smells and wind and everything. Really? Oh, it's so good, dude. It's so good. It's so good when it's over. You're like, fuck. I want to live there. People just want to get right back in line. Do it again. Yeah. Oh, that, I haven't gotten a good ride in a long time. It made me really think, and I, the, the first time I did it was, I think, two years ago, but it made me really think, like, this is going to get real weird. Because if they can do this now, oh, yeah. 10 years from now, what the fuck is it going to be like? I was at the Gas Digital Studios, and Ralph had these 3D glasses. And it's basically you have to like take an elevator, then you're walking in the street. Mm-hmm. And like there's a part where there's like a wooden plank, and they put a wooden plank in real life on the side on the carpet. And I was scared. We have that right here. Yeah, it's terrifying. Yeah, it's crazy. I did it the other day. And then um, the, the plank disappeared. Yeah. The plank takes yeah, off yeah. from under you, and then you like see the rug, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you start falling to the ground. It's... It, it, it's Fucked up. You know how they tell you when you're a kid, if you die in your dreams, you die in real life, which yes. doesn't make any sense. How would you know? But that's what this feels like. It does feel like that. Yeah. Why? Who the fuck knows that? You die in your dreams. You're yeah. really dead. <laughs> Shut up. I'll force myself to die in my dream, bitch. Come back and haunt you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll show you. I'll die. Imagine if they made a, an Alex Honnold one. An Alex Honnold. Virtual that? Re- He's that climber from Free Solo, the guy who uh, Free Solo climbs. Like oh Jesus, El that's, Capitan. Oh yeah, like, that's no joke. Straight faces. Oh my God, he's he. We were just talking about him. I, I, even discussing him lightly makes my hands sweat. How? how did, I don't know. I, I just it. I don't understand how he conquers that. Is he suicidal? No, not at all. No, he's not at all. He's just really good. He knows he can do it. I, but yeah, this but there's chaos theory comes in at a certain point, right? Like if if you're if I'm fighting somebody a billion times at one time I'm gonna land that punch to take him out. Yes, but in his look at that. Oh Jesus! Yeah, different guy, but it's the same spot. Okay, just that's the up. same spot. He just did it. That's a, just it's because they're most going vertically upside. They're going horizontally Dude, upside that down. Is right? So crazy. The fact that someone even can do that blows my fucking mind. But the fact that someone can do that two thousand feet above the ground is just f- insane. That is insane. So there's a oh route that you have to go through. And as you're going through that route, you got to continually chalk your hands and shove them into this crack and slowly make your way up. And he first I ascended it. I can't look at that. I know. I'm, I'm so sweaty. He first ascended it with ropes and he marks his okay. path and he makes his detailed analysis. And then he ascends it. I'm sure he ascends it with ropes without actually using the ropes and knows that he can pull okay, it off. So that there, okay, so there's a lot of work that goes into look, this. Look, it doesn't fucking matter. Oh look at that fall. And he's got big ass gorilla hands. He's like a thin, wiry guy with these meat, like meaty a tree frog. sausage hands. That's what tree yeah. frogs have, right? Look they're small hands. and the hands are gigantic. Yeah. Well, they're very muscular. I mean, he's fucking just climbing and pulling himself. And he could, I'm sure he could do like fingertip push ups. Yeah, and yeah. Pull, up, pull ups, rather. And his back must be insane. Insane. Yeah. And he's light. You know, you have to stay light. Well, that's the thing with the proportion, right? Because if you put on too much muscle mass, it's going to be, it's, it's like yeah. this weird, delicate dance that they got to do. Yeah, the best climbers. Uh, I was, I, I, <laughs> something I've been following recently because I got into these Alex Honnold videos. And then uh, I didn't know bouldering was like the, what they call it. They call it bouldering. Okay. But these, the best guys that do this are these really almost anorexic-looking guys that are just super shredded. Like, they have, there's no weight, lo- right. like, no extra weight anywhere. And there's this gym. I forget where the gym was. Some climbing gym where they're doing all these different exercises uh, and chin-ups and, and, and planks and stuff while hanging off of two fingers. So they're doing fang- two-finger chin-ups, and then they're do- doing two-finger chin-ups where they literally, literally like, hold and extend their legs in front of them oh and then pull themselves up and, like, and, and basically do, like, a muscle up yeah, with yeah. two fingers, like, hanging on a rock face. Like <laughs> There's also some little Asian girl who does all this stuff. She's like 12, and she's like a spider monkey. No. What? No. Oh, she's too young. Get her down. Well, I don't know how old she is, 12, 14, but it's, it's – I mean, you see her climbing like this, and it's just it just, I'm just amazing. I'm just glad I could do pull-ups now with the form. <laughs> Fuck. There's fucking people like that, that 
jolt of satisfaction when you get to the top of a mountain like that. <gasps> oh, my God. What are you doing, sir? Yeah. That's going to break off. <laughs> oh, my God. That thing's barely hanging on. And this guy's like, I'm just going to climb it, bro. Fuck. Fuck that. Fuck Everything about that. This is just for Instagram, too. Jesus. <laughs> they just want to get that good profile so pic. And people are falling, man. You know, like a bunch of people fell in, in uh, Yellowstone. Did they? No, Grand Canyon. A bunch of people fell in the Grand Canyon. Like uh, an unusually high number li lately. That is preposterous. The fact that this person can even do this. Is that I, a woman? But yeah. I think it's kind of... What? It must be yeah. easier when it's She's narrow. She's more man than me. When you can do with... You use your legs that uh, way, That one's right? not above the ground very high. Oh, okay. Look, I don't give a fuck. Pretend it is. Uh, Pretend it is. <laughs> I mean, she, if, if, if they can do that, I mean, how often do they fall? Fuck that thing. Fuck getting under that thing either, by the way. I'm not even going to camp under that thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not long for this world. Look how much it sticks out. That's crazy. Get out of there, man. Yeah, we've all seen enough Wile E. Coyote cartoons to know how this ends. <laughs> so he's going to saw it. <laughs> he's going to look down, and it's going to be the end of it. What does that call for people, Jamie? It's called the rhino or something? Uh, Rockland, uh, South Africa, rock climbing, it says. Yeah, the rhino rock climbing. The rhino climbing. Yeah, I can see that. Fuck that. Dude, I saw there's a Nature's Metal post that I saw. Where there was a uh, a hyena pack broke into uh, a safari, they had, like a safari camp, and killed a kudu in the middle of the lobby. So like these people are like really getting the safari experience, like in the lobby of the place where they're staying to go on safari. A pack of hyenas slaughters a fucking kudu. Hyenas are the most fucked. Look at up. that! Look at that! Oh my god! Oh my god! Imagine. We're going to go see some elephants, and it'll be amazing, and a pack of hyenas just turn that fucking place into a slaughterhouse. What do you call a group of hyenas? Do we know? Is it a pack? It's a term. It's got to be like a laughter <sighs> of weird, hyenas. It's a bit. weird term. Yeah. Yeah. And the females are transgender. Yes. Well, they're not transgender. Well, they have a micro they have an, 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 No. Large clitoris. In, 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 engorged. Clitoris. It's large. They're yeah. matriarchal, too, so they're bigger than the males. Yes. I have a whole bit about them. They have this, like female bodybuilders. Did you know that sixty percent of all hyena babies suffocate to death? No, how during how so? childbirth? Why sixty percent? Because they come out of the dick. What? The females have a dick, right? The babies have to come out of the dick. No, it, it splits open. Yep. Really? Sixty percent suffocate to death. It's a called a cackle. Cackle. Oh, okay. Technical term is a cackle. They're usually referred to as packs. Go back to that picture. From they also get tamed pretty easily. I went to a zoo where they had a pair of them. They were very sweet. I guess if you feed them. Yeah. They don't have but they're to smart. You, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Yes. But they'll try to wow. fuck up lions, man. You oh, they steal from the lions. They, they fuck the they're lions. They're like gangsters because there's a whole gang of them. And yeah. the lion's like, all right. And they're like, no, no, we're doing this. And I'm taking bite, that kill. And they bite the lions, too. Yeah. They try to eat them. They're, they're gangster when they're all together. But look at that picture, man. That is so insane. That's going to be one funny Yelp review. Imagine coming downstairs for some coffee and a newspaper early. Today we're going to go see some giraffes. Oh, Jesus. I would want. Oh, Jesus. I'd want dibs on those horns. Wow, they got plenty of those horns, man. Really? Yeah, they're shooting those things left and right. Oh, look wow. at that thing! What is that? Back that up, uh, Jamie. It said there's more info in their story. Whoa! Oh, look wow. at the the unicorn. Look at that thing. It's got three horns. What is that? Is it three? Dude, it's yeah, got yeah. three. Oh my what? god! What the fuck? What is that? Okay, the first one, middle See? horn's got to be, or it's got a deformity. If you told me that that was an animal, I'd be like, "Fuck off! That's not a real animal." Go back to that thing. What is that thing, Jamie? It's the you um, what is it called? It's a type of cow, isn't it? Three-horned cow? Well, not the three-horned. I think the ho third horn is a deformity. No animal has three horns. Okay, so that's that just like a rare the, one. It almost looks like the water buffalo horns. But it looks so perfect. No, the water buffaloes are curved. The, no, like that they're one. right above your head. Oh, those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that thing. Look no, no, that. it's not. This is like a that Texas thing. That's a Texas thing? Like a no, Texas thing that ain't a cow, bro. Oh, I kinda, it does look like a cow. You know what? Stop. That might be bullshit. Go what back if, to that. They like stuck it on there? Yeah, go the back to The middle one can't be can real. Can you put your cursor on that and pause it? No. No, not like a phone? Uh, Dude, that looks fake. Going look, what's going the on with that cow's face? Be that looks like a cow. That is a cow, I told you, yeah. Are you sure it's a cow? I'm not sure. No, look at the back. That's not a cow. Yeah, there's. they have those humps. The do, like they that. call that a dewlap. But uh, really like that? Well, yeah, what's it called? A zebu? Is it a zebu? A zebu. Maybe it's got a lot of deformities. It could look be a zebu. It's maybe. I'll, hmm. look, I'll look and see. If we can. <laughs> I saw one of those in real life with the two horns, and it's just like the ne that talk about the neck strength. It's yeah. just like oh yeah. I typed it in, and there's a picture. That exact picture came up. So of what? Three horned cow. So it might just so be it a, is a cow. Okay. It's called yeah. an Ankoli Watusi. 
Okay. A modern American breed of a domestic cow. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. It's so not modern natural. modern American and they call it a Watusi? How rude. <laughs> that, that, that Cultural thing appropriation. Uganda, that, that Go to that up? picture down there. There's another one with three horns right below you. There's a few. I was trying to see Look if they're real one. or not. Look at that one. Is that real? That's, a not, that's, that's a, not real. That's like oh. a hat put on it. What? Yeah, it's like Are a wizard sure? cap or a dunce cap. That's a cap too. Oh. Uh, this is the one from Uganda. I don't know if that's... So it probably sometimes when animals get an injury yeah. to their bone plate, they'll they'll branch off like elk. You'll have like they'll fight with each other. Is that real? That looks real. But that well, that's a un, not uncommon deformity. People have horns like sometimes that. elk fight with each other and they stab each other in the head. And yeah. when they stab each other in the head, it breaks the pedicle and then it splits off into two different directions. So you'll have instead of like that where you have two main beams that come out of the animal's head you'll have two main beams and then a third so a third one will look like a spear and on the 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 one that has two there'll be no points it'll just be these spears that grow straight up with with no uh, no additional points well same thing with lots of like plants you you top the cap off and there's going to grow two or four branches yes exactly yeah. exactly nature finds a way yeah but it's, look at that no, i mean it's just like a deformity that happens sometimes mm okay that's pretty dope. Why do I like that better than two? But see, look at the one on the right to the left. That's that's what I was talking about. That's those right. horns look like that's just crazy. Like those, yeah. See, but here's the thing: if they all had three and that one had two, I'd be like, two is better. <laughs> it's rarer. It looks more symmetrical. Three looks stupid. Yeah, I don't I wish like our cows didn't have three horns. Yeah, I, what's the what was the mi middle horn? What's the benefit of that? Better way to fuck you up. Do they, yeah, do they sell them? Well, that was the thing about one of the ranches that I was on. They had one of these animals. That an elk that had broken antlers, okay, uh, or broken pedicure, or whatever, whatever that is, pedicle, it, it, right? Pedicle, yeah, yeah, that's right. And it, I knew it sounded wrong. <laughs> and it was branching off and forming these spears, so it was fucking killing all these other elk. Oh wow! Because instead of clashing and locking up like all these antlers do, where they have all these d additional points, yeah. And what the, they do is they they lock in. Yeah, yeah. This would slide right through and stab them in the heart, and stab them oh in the neck, and stab them in the body. So this one elk was killing everybody. That's so they'd the go to war with him. He just kill him. That's the alpha. He had an injury. Yeah. Well, that's also evolution at work. It is evolution. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's not going to be genetic, so you can't pass it on. I wonder. I wonder if eventually, over many, 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 many generations, like that, that signal will somehow or another get through. I mean, obviously, something happens where they develop yeah, something like that in the first place. Yes. Like if, if it became better, that they branched off in some new way that lets them stab each other a little bit better, those, those animals would breed better. Yeah. Or, yeah. The craziest thing is that grows in a couple of months. But they also shed it, right? Shed it. At the end of the summer or end of the winter, they have nothing on their head for a couple of months, and then it starts growing again, and it grows like wildfire. Isn't, like, isn't it surprisingly light? Because it's like a, no. it, it's heavy as hell? That's heavy as fuck. That's bone, man. Okay. That's, well, there's different kinds of bone. Uh, feel birds that. have bone. That's not even big. That's a mule oh, yeah. deer. That's wow. small. Okay. But that's that's heavy. But I have uh, an elk skull out there that you can pick up. Pick that fucking thing up. You're like, holy shit. That's why if you look at a bull elk, they have giant necks. Yeah, yeah. Huge necks. Because it's all that muscle carry all that weight around jesus <laughs> yeah they're cool to look at they're dope they're i went down too. a um rabbit hole of getting all kinds of animal stuff it's kind of fun getting animal stuff yeah. what do you mean like that pen i showed you made oh, of mammoth yeah. molar that's I got pretty a, cool I got where a, did you get that where did you get a pen made out of mammoth molar um you could just can i see it yeah sure here you go thank you <laughs> i've got a what do i got a fordite that's a real mammoth molar yeah because mammoth isn't protected because they're extinct so you can trade oh, mammoth dirty. ivory and mammoth teeth very easily. How dirty. Yeah. This is sweet, dude. Yeah, it's Who makes cool. this pen? Uh, some guy on Instagram. I, I'm blanking on his name. Does it make you feel more important when you're writing with something that's like from an animal? How can I feel more important? Good point. You're good at that, dude. <laughs> you're good at the fun. It, it does. It, it's kind of fun because the fans paid for it. So it's like, oh. all right, this is cool. Nice. Yeah. That's beautiful. Are you, uh, you still on Compound Media? You I am. I've got my show Nightshade there, and, and my other show where I interview people is You're Welcome at Gas Shout Digital. out to my friend Anthony. Anthony's great. Yeah. So I Dave Landau is covering for me today. So oh, thank you, Dave. beautiful. He's oh, a good dude. So he can be here with us. That's right. Uh, yeah. Have a fun adorable. vacation in California. How long are you staying for? I'm leaving tonight at 11. Uh, in and out? Bang, bang? No, I got here on Thursday. What'd you do? I, do you know who Ethan Supley is? Why do I know He's that a character name? actor, American History 10, uh, Boy Meets World. He's just in... Um, American History X, you mean? <laughs> that was the joke, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
He was on uh, My Friend is Earl, right? Yeah. Or, yeah, is Earl. What's called? Earl. My name is Earl. My name is Earl. Name is Earl. Uh, yeah. So he has a new podcast talking about fitness and body issues. I uh. did that. He's a great dude. Um, I saw Bridget Fetessy, who has been on your show. Yeah, she's great. We recorded also. Yeah, she's hilarious. She's oh, one of my favorite Twitter follows. Yeah, I'm having dinner with her tonight. So Beautiful. Tell us what's up. I will. And uh, my favorite place here in LA is the Museum of Jurassic Technology. So that was Jurassic really Technology. Yeah, the Museum of Jurassic Technology. What is it? You don't know about this? No. It's so Joe Rogan, really. Oh my God. It's dedicated to the Lower Jurassic. So basically. <laughs> It's a museum about museums, and you go there, and you're looking through shit, and you're like, I don't know if this is real. So they have exhibits about, like, Antonius Kircher, who was from the, like, 1300s, who said the world is tied with secret knots and using magnetism to prove God. Then they have microscopes where someone used butterfly scales to make images uh, on that kind of level. They have exhibits about um, uh, Cat's Cradle. Um, They have exhibits about... They're, they're abs- oh yeah, there's the, there's the um, microscopes. You're not allowed to go use cameras in there. So it just keeps unwinding, unwinding, unwinding. And I'm a very Willy Wonka person. And you're in there and you're like, this is absolutely magical. Oh yeah, yeah, they've got a, a room. That's horns from a woman, apparently. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That grew out of a woman's head. But you know, back in the day museums, half the shit was fake. Right. So you're in there and you're wondering, what is, is this real or is this not? They have an oh. exhibit now of dice that are falling apart, like dice that are dying. Uh, and they have an exhibit on mobile homes of California. So th- I love huh. that place. Wait, where is this place again? It's in Culver City. No shit. I've yeah. never heard anybody talk about it. Really? Now. Yeah. Have you? Never. Dude, it's the best place in LA. Look at that. Look at the stars too. It is 4.4 so 4 stars on good. Google. And you go in there and you don't know what the hell you're looking at. It's like It's, it's closed though. Yeah, but it, I oh, was just there right yesterday. There, yeah. It's amazing. Oh, Monday it's closed, Wednesday it's closed. Or Very limited. Tuesday. Hours. Four days a week. Tuesday it's closed. <laughs> Yeah. That's crazy. It's they're, only they're, open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. What if I want to find out about cool shit on Monday? Well, uh, internet. <laughs> Maybe they need to have a better business model. Well, I, I mean, it seems ridiculous. People like museums on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. LA, everything is closed on Monday. I wanted to go to cool art galleries. I had a whole good list, and they're all closed. Even Are they the, really? Even the Broad is closed. You should go to the LACMA. Yeah, LACMA is Terrible. open. Terrible. It's a terrible. It's a disaster. Well, they're rebuilding it. It's a, but it's not what it's not what's a disaster. What's a disaster is what they call art. Oh, there's a plexiglass box that's on the ground. It's okay. just an amber box. No, seriously. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. And I go, what is that? And they go, well, it's, you know, it's open for your interpretation. Oh yeah. The yeah, artist yeah, yeah. put the and, like there's a a line like a, a wire around the thing you can't pass through. I'm like, why can't I sit on the box? Like, no, that's a piece of art. I'm like, you're kidding. Wait, you're. Really? Oh yeah, it's so dumb. It makes you angry. Okay. And then there's other there's a, another uh, art exhibit that was uh, videos of people playing catch. Oh my god. That's it. Oh my, you're not joking. No, I'm not joking. That stupid fucking thing is just sitting there. And people are like, oh my god, brilliant. That's like I'm IKEA. A, oh my god, amazing, <laughs> amazing. That makes me sad because there is so much good contemporary art. Like that? What's that? What is that? Exactly. I like the paintings, though. In the back, dope. the middle? Yeah. That one's pretty cool. Oh, well, there's definitely some cool shit there. Yeah. But when I saw that amber box, I got violent. Uh, all right, we're out of here. Yeah, done. I yeah. got angry. Like, you made me pay money, and I'm going to see this fucking amber box? Like, really? You, you like, out of all the art, out of all the art, that, amber box. that you put that on the bottom, you put it on the floor so people could stare at it in, in the L.A.? Well, Museum of Art? You know what it is? It basically turns the audience into performance artists. Because everyone looks pretend. at it, and, or, or, yeah. you, or, you, or you lose your shit, so you got no. triggered. I didn't get triggered. I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I went with my kids, but oh. they were like, what is that? I go, that's the box. Like, Why do we have a box? I go, that's the art. The, the art is the box. Like They were angry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think there's an art to angering <laughs> children. <laughs> Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, they're hilarious. The more I talk angry. about this box, the more I like it. It's so goddamn dumb. <laughs> it made me angry. Well, look, what about Marcel Duchamp and the urinal? Like what is that? Over 100 years ago. Marcel Duchamp was a uh, painter, right? Mm-hmm. And they were having an exhibit, and they asked him to contribute something. He goes, all right. He takes a urinal, puts it on the thing, and goes, it's called fountain. And they didn't know what the fuck to do. So they finally included it, but behind a curtain. <sighs> Assholes. Yeah, yeah, it's hilarious. A, a lot of those fucking art assholes. Like a lot of the art world is a weird world, man. Yeah, I don't because know it at all. People catch fire; they they become hot, and then you look at their stuff, and you're like, I went over this guy's house. He owned an agency, 
in uh, in L.A. I mean, a big house in Aspen, fucking beautiful house. And he had this thing on his wall. They looked like a six-year-old took some tissue paper of different colors and glued them in some weird fucking shape. So I said, "Hey, man, is that did your your kid do that?" And this agent goes, "That's actually a blah blah blah. That's a blah blah blah." I go, "What do you mean?" Like, the, um, wait a minute. That's you paid a, money that, for this? Yeah. He said it's worth thirty thousand dollars. I go, "That's worth thirty thousand dollars." That. What about the guy who's that? takes Mickey Mouse and puts X's over his eyes and his painting is sold for like ten million? Amazing. Do you know what I'm talking about? Could oh, keep that hustle alive. What's that? I don't know. It's like a something. Keep that hustle. He's like one, alive. he's got one word name, and he's just some dude, and he makes Simpsons and just puts yeah, yeah. cross. Mickey, uh, the cause. Cause. K-A-W-S. Good. Have you seen this guy? No. Look at his look at his art. How about it's, I won't? It's action. It's oh, pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is my show. Okay. This ain't the Michael Malice experience. <laughs> Come on, Michael. <laughs> Why I, you make me dumber? I heard something about this recently. <laughs> I don't know if it's accurate because it sounds like a juicy truth, but like it also could be easily disproven. Uh, that that what you're saying that like jacked up prices of art is some like rich person scammed for like tax evasion sort of oh but they mm. can like it's a write off they, and they can, can get donate an appraisal it. really high and then they can donate it to a company and like not pay taxes but they can donate a 20 million dollar huh. I'm sure I'm sure there's some of that yes. I'm sure however I know people that are these art collector folks that buy this stupid stuff and they have it all over their fucking house and they want to tell you what it is and where it came from it's a thing it's like buying wine that costs a thousand dollars a bottle like there's people that are into that they're into showing it to you and they're into look at this watch it's from the 16th century like I, there's, there's people that are into that shit and they, they love the fact that they have some unusual piece of art on their wall and they love the sophisticated feeling they get by describing what the artist is trying to say See, I have this guy, Sean Chow, uh, C-H-A-O. I have, he makes dioramas. What is I, a diorama? It's like a 3D sculpture. You know, oh. it's like a little scene. And I have it right over my desk, because when I went to L.A. like seven years ago, I went to a giant robot. They had an exhibit. I'm like, this is really cool. And one day I'm going to buy it. And I bought it. And now every day I look oh. at it, I'm like, oh, this is like something I really wanted. But it was like a grand. It wasn't like 30 grand. Right. And anyone can look at it and be like, oh. This is, makes me happy. It's actually art. Yeah, look yeah. at Sean Chow is his name. There's I mean, some art. There's look some at that. Art. Like that. Oh wow. It's fun. That is pretty cool. Yeah, but that makes sense to me. I right. get that. You can look at it and you'll understand why I enjoy, I enjoy it. Yeah, I get that. There's things I get. Yeah, because that's not tissues. Yeah. This is a fun <laughs> thing. A fish underwater. Yeah, it's someone he made something. Yes, with his hands, and and you're also helping someone directly by buying his product. But here's where the Isn't hustle that great? is. great. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But here's where the hustle is. When people don't really like it, but they pretend they like it because it's the cool thing to pretend you like. I think it's more they also – it's same with clothes. Like you're like a label whore. <sighs> it's like, oh, this is a this. It's like, like you just want to buy the name. What's up with the sneakers that kids are wearing that have a fucking uh, a green tag on them? I was, it was explained to me. Are we total is boomers it, now? There's a green <laughs> tag. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think I'm a boomer. I'm not a boomer, right? I'm a Generation X. But boomer's a, a state different. of mind. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. I'm in. <laughs> this green tag. What is it? Uh, off-white. Is that what it is? Yeah. So they have this green tag on this pair. I was buying a pair of Nikes for okay. my kid. And they're like, oh, those are off-white. Oh, well, I go, what's up off? with this green thing? Yeah, what they're like, it? oh, you leave that on. I'm like, fuck you. I'm not leaving this stupid plastic tag on. <laughs> no, you don't leave that on. Wait, what, what is it? Can we have this thing that people do, that thing. Giant oh, ass God. tag. They leave these stupid uh. fucking tags. And these are huge. They're cumbersome. They look dumb. But, but they look. wear them on their shoe. It's part of the thing. It's part of the brand. This person was trying to explain it to me. It's part of the brand. Look, in five years, it's going to go away. Uh, uh, why is it here? <laughs> because it looks different. No! It looks different. It's, no. it's like a flag. Someone, someone should have a knife, and they should oh. go up to these fucking kids and just cut that off and go, no, we're about to go to war. <laughs> this, they're making you soft and stupid. This is probably a plot by the Russians and the Chinese and the Iranians to try to make sure that our kids grow dumber and dumber. This is probably something that was started out on Instagram by one of those IRA, Internet Research Agencies. What's this? That's the people that make all the propaganda oh. that are from the Russian yeah, troll yeah. farms. The IRA. You never yeah, heard of that? I've not heard of it. I am Internet, a Russian troll, but Internet yeah. Research Agency is a, a state-funded organization that's this huge group of people that makes these. They did do some hilarious stuff. There's a woman named Renee DeResta. She okay. investigated this and reported on it. She came on the podcast to explain it to me after I'd heard her on Sam Harris's podcast. But they did stuff like they would have a fake Black Lives Matter page that they started. 
and then they would argue with people like uh, about, about Black Lives Matter, and then they would organize like a Texas separatism wow. uh, meeting to meet. They, they organized a Texas separatism page. They had a page, and then they organized a meeting, a Facebook meeting, where these people would be there at the same time as another meeting they set up between these uh, Muslim people. So they'd have the Texas separatists on one side of the streets and the Muslims on the other side of the street having a protest at the exact same time. Like they were doing shit like this on purpose and fucking with people. That's and they did a hilarious. lot. Yeah, and they did a lot of anti Hillary Clinton stuff and a lot a lot of like different like uh, uh like they would pretend that they're black women as as a black woman i cannot vote for hillary clinton like she does not represent us like they, and they were just sowing these seeds of discourse or discord all throughout social media that's all these wonderful wacky social media pages it's kind of hilarious yeah the more discord the better but it's of course it's going to happen as soon as the government realized that if you rile people enough enough they'll engage and then they'll you can actually shift opinions yeah if of you're course good at, yeah especially if you're funny Yes, like that's that's one of the things about all these funny memes. Oh yeah, oh Some my of, God! There, it's. I mean, this is uh, this is why I'm very scared for the Democrats, because Joe Biden is might be the nominee. He does not have a good social media team. Uh, when when he had this family photo for Halloween, uh, all I I just pr- replied with a photo of a crack pipe. Right. And where's Hunter hashtag was trending. And I'm like, no matter what you think of Joe Biden, it is not acceptable for his Twitter not to be able to handle this and anticipate it. Right. Especially because you have someone who just tweeted his way into the presidency uh, three years ago. Yes. Like, where are the people who are helping this guy, you know, with his social media game? Yeah, they can't help him. The, the the people that are mean and funny like that are all Republicans. <laughs> there's something there's something about the the memes <laughs> that go against Trump versus the memes that go for Trump. Like the pro Trump memes are so much funnier. Yeah, the left can't meme is the thing. They're not that good at it. They're what, not that good at one it. Of my it's tw- a mean kind of humor. One of my tweets became a meme when uh, your girl Tulsi took out uh, Officer Harris, and I said, if there's one thing a Hawaiian knows, it's how to roast a pig. <laughs> and that went wide. <laughs> ah! I wonder if she knows about that. She we, knows. Does she? She knows, yeah. Did she see it? She saw it. She saw How it, How do you yeah. know she saw because it? Because I... Send I, it to me and I'll make sure she sees it. Okay. Please. I will. Absolutely. I'll send it to her. Uh, her chief of communications uh, whatever follows me on Twitter. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, she's, yeah. The, she's good. I like her. Well, I, just, I like I, her as a person. I, I'm just glad that now that Harris is gone, it's just going to be hilarious for the next year, whoever it is. Well, the Harris thing was weird, man. Did, like, that they didn't know the stuff that you could call her out on oh like, yeah that come on that tulsi did but tulsi didn't even get to the horrible stuff the horrible stuff was when she was threatening single moms with jail time oh if yeah they, their kids were truant right imagine you're you're just barely staying above water as a single mom and you got to literally m- make your fucking children terrified that you're going to go to jail in order for them to go to jail and she was laughing about how that's how she got people to go to jail that's but th- that's how she got people to go to school and that's the thing is that she, i don't think she actually cared i think this was her means to further her political career i think you're right because when you are you could say a lot of things about joe biden and i have on twitter to go on stage and call him a cl- closet racist or imply that, come on. Like, this is, is that what she did? The first debate, she goes, oh, you were against busing. And he's like, I was against it on the federal level. Like, what are you talking about? She's like, blah, 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 blah. I was like, who are you fooling? They're just you playing nasty, games. nasty pig. They're I don't know what playing, she's done. Yeah, they're playing games. When she, when she dropped out, like, the fans chipped in on, on my live stream, and I spent $400 on ham. And I did a ham tasting because the pig was done. Oh. It was a lot of fun. Have you ever tried that like Spanish ham? That Iberico? It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like $200 a pound. I have tried it. Yeah, it's, it's made delicious. Of, the pigs only eat acorns. Yeah, that's that stuff that um, Chris Ryan brought in. It's fantastic. It's yeah. really good. Fantastic, yeah. So. Yeah. I've had wild pigs that only eat acorns. And is Ke- it good? Oh, ham fantastic. is so good. Yeah. Wild pigs that only eat acorns have a great smell to them. And it's dark. It's like a dark meat. Oh. So good. Yeah, I, I I tried like 20 different kinds of ham, and I loved every minute of it. Yeah, I know a dude who um, he raises pigs, and he feeds them hazelnuts and chocolate milk. Yeah. And the bacon. And it comes same. through. Yeah. The I don't understand how. Oh, and magical Jesus juice. <laughs> you got to feed them mushrooms, too. Yeah, I don't know what happens. <laughs> Can you imagine they're eating mushroom <laughs> ham on your tripping face? Well, I, I guarantee you, I wonder if it works. What happens when pigs eat psychedelic mushrooms? They, they, you they know must break reindeer. down. Come on, right? I don't think so. You think Ra- it goes into reindeer the meat? Reindeer are addicted to something called the Amanita muscaria. 
That's a mushroom. A ne- Amanita muscaria is a Santa Claus mushroom. Okay, why Santa? It's the Claus? mushroom that's connected to the myth of Santa Claus. How's it's, that? It's got a mycorrhizal relationship with coniferous trees. Meaning okay, it grows under pine trees. It looks like a shiny package. It lo- like, no. like, think about pine trees that we have. We put in our fucking yeah, house. Yeah, of course. And there's little shiny packages. Do you have pine a picture trees. of this? It's red and white, which is just like Santa Claus's outfit. Yeah. And reindeers love it, and they fucking trip balls when they eat it, and they fly away. Really? Seriously, it was all a shaman. Who used to come down during like when they were telling people not to eat these mushrooms? Shaman would sneak into people's houses through the fucking chimneys. Yeah, only if you were nice. Yeah, it would just or climb maybe only the if you were naughty because they were watching the fucking front door. So people would climb down through the chimney with a bag of mushrooms, and they would all trip balls together. Wow. All speculative. Of course. Wait, you can buy this? But this these yes. mushrooms? No, you could pick it. Yeah, but I Amanita mean, muscaria is a weird one. Okay, it's a weird one. That's that's what it is. Um, I've taken it before, and it does something, but it doesn't do something as profound as um, psilocybin. But reindeer or caribou, I should say, which is what a reindeer is. Caribou love them. Look at that face. <laughs> and there's another thing they do with this. They uh, rain be- reindeer apparently will dive on your piss. If you're in a, a lodge and you're eating the Amanita muscaria and you urinate outside, you have to be careful of reindeer because they'll literally tackle you to try to get to your piss. Because they smell it. Because it smells so potent. So people actually, when they trip balls, they get a second high by drinking their own piss. So they're tripping balls, they piss into this glass, and they drink their own piss. Yeah, because it's going to be so concentrated coming out, your body wants to get rid of it as fast as possible. Yeah, this is the mushroom that's on the cover of the John Marco Allegro book, The Sacred Mushroom okay. and the Cross. That's that mushroom. Uh, what would be the evolutionary advantage of a reindeer eating this? They trip. But Feels w- good. But they're going to be vulnerable. Woo! I don't think so. Some animals, and including like like Vikings, they would trip and then go into war. And they thought it held, actually gave them an advantage. They would call them berserkers. Like, oh, because the they're not going to be feeling pain and they're not going to be fearing death. They're not going to be fearing death. And they're going to be... Well, first of all, war was such a part of life. It was so normal and so constant. It was a constant. And they wanted in some way or another to be heightened or prepared for it. So whether they were drunk, which a lot of tribes would just get drunk and then go into war, or whether they... Because they, they would just be able to en- endure and be willing to do things that maybe they wouldn't be able to do or be willing to do if they weren't drunk. Maybe they would anticipate you know the, the potential dangers of combat and then they'd freak out but when they're drunk they'd be like fucking war and just run in and well they would do that with mushrooms too i just remembered this is foothill antiques for the mammoth tooth foothill antiques. they're great stuff it's a guy i'm just glad we're guy. not live anymore that way i could buy them all well he's got fordite also i got from him do you know fordite what is that you know about fordite no this is such a cool thing so all the car companies Where's the pen i'm gonna write that down foothill antiques all the car companies oh. used to use spray paint for like manually for the different cars, right? So over the years, you'd have layers of this paint and it became basically an artificial mineral. So when you take a cross section, it looks like oh, here. give me that pen. Why don't I give you oh, the, ma- we go. the, no, the nice okay. pen? Okay. Foothill Antiques, I'm yeah. sorry. So say it again. Fordite, right? You have these car companies, car, car plants. So they're spray painting the, the Ford truck black. The next year it's red, the next year it's green. Over time, the painting cu- accumulates and you can use that cross section to make Really cool things. Oh wow! Yeah, so look up re- Fortnite, Jamie. It looks really, really cool. Just they make keep jewelry. Painting. Yeah, over- look. Oh, that's real. Yeah, that's from a car. That's from a car plant. Because look, every year it's a different color. Oh, it's a really cool substance. So I've got a f- couple of Fortnite pens, warthog tusk. Um, that's crazy. Wooden one from the DMZ. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That's really cool. Yeah. I never heard of that before. And so one more time, they're taking it out of. Like so a Ford plant or a Corvette right. plant or whatever. I have one of Corvette, one of Ford. And over the years, you know, they, they chip it away from the walls, mm-hmm. and they have a block of it. There you go. So it gets that thick. Yeah. Wow. And you could do whatever you want with it, including make a, and turning Dude, it into Dude, that's pen. fucking cool. Right? That's like a cool form of a fossil or something. or It's like an industrial fossil. Yeah. It looks it, cool, Because you got the layer. It's like tree rings, almost. And so you have a pen made out of that? I've got two. Oh, you lucky devil. Yeah, he sent me one for free. So how do people know that you're you're into pens? Oh, so I do something called spike funding, right? So what happens on Twitter is every so often some cretin will come for me. And I'll be like, it would be a shame if people send me money to waste on things I don't want just to spite you. And I put up michaelmalice.com contribute. And I go, I will post receipts. And people send me cash and they say, this has to be wasted. So I buy, I don't need seven pens. I don't need eight shaving brushes. I don't need a signed copy of Langston Hughes's book. I got them. Fossils. 
Uh, and this is all because of a cretin yeah, who so comes after you? On Twitter. And I'm like, okay, people are going to say, and then they go, oh, you know, you're a um, snake oil salesman. I'm like, no, 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 no one's getting anything out of this except for spiting you. I don't really need these things. How and does that, that make you a snake oil salesman? Because they're like, oh, you're conning these people out of money. They're like, no, no, no. It's all understood. This is total waste of money just to fuck with you. Well, they definitely don't know what snake oil is then. <laughs> yeah. Now, wh wh why are you engaging with people on Twitter? You're a smart guy. Because it's fun. You enjoy it? It's hilarious. It's my mm. biggest uh, activity. Really? Clowning idiots. That's yeah. your number one thing? It's tw I'm really fun with it, and I'm really good with it. And I've, I've started doing a little bit of psyops on Twitter, too. Psyops? Yeah. So, like, for example, what I've been doing is a lot of these people, these candidates, their, like, press secretary will have fewer followers than me, right? So I'll say something like, hey, there was an article in the New York Times today about your candidate. How freaked out is the campaign, and how much is this a reflection on you not being able to do your job correctly? Because you know when that article hits, the New York Times, you're in the campaign, you're in the bunker, you're freaking out, what does this mean? So to have, and if someone's like, fuck you, they're going to be like, no, fuck you. So you but, do this even if there's not a real story? Well, no, if there is a story. Oh. Because you know they're in full panic. Okay. So when they're in full panic, then you attack? Yeah. And why do you do this? For fun. And because they're fun. bad people often. Which ones are bad? Jeremy Corbyn. And Kamala Harris, those are the two I thought oh. were the worst. Other than that, I don't think anyone's a bad person. Wh who's the Corbin guy again? What do you, he's the Corbin. What do you mean, Labor? Right. What's his name again? Jeremy, Jeremy Corbin. Corbin, yeah. What does he do? He was the head of the Labor Party in the UK. That's right, okay. Yeah, that's and he just had confusing. their biggest disaster election since 1935, worst uh, election. Oh, that's right. He, yeah. he uh, my favorite thing he did was he said his pronouns. Oh, yeah. He said my pronouns are he, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did this video, my name is Jamie Corbin. Jeremy Corbyn, yeah. whatever the fuck it is. Elizabeth Warren has her pronouns on her Twitter. Um, Thank God Twitter. she does. Yeah. Well, this is signaling that you're part of the tribe. Yes. You yeah, know. you're willing to believe in nonsense. That bitch is 150 years old. She knows what her fucking pronouns are. <laughs> <laughs> Mum and mummy. Come on with this nonsense. Your pronouns are. What's your name? Is it Elizabeth? You're, mm. a, la you're a lady, right? <laughs> Come on, well, in, in her defense, War in her defense, Warren is a man's name, so it's not there. She yeah, there, she oh, there is. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's so stupid. It's so stupid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what do you do? You know who Janae Marie Kroc is? No. So Janae Marie Kroc, I had her on my. It's just also funny how I'm not saying you're conservative. How conservatives react to this stuff? She was as uh, Matt Krakowski, like the world champion powerlifter, right? Thousand pound squat, something crazy. Oh my god! Comes out as trans or gender fluid, whatever. Janae, and people I had her on my show. People freaking out. Ah, la, la, competing as a man. What am I going? No, no, no. As Matt, yeah, before and after, he was a world record holder. He competed as a man, and now they're like, well. If he competed as a man and got a world record, and now he wants to be a chick, I don't know what, what to do about this. And they don't know how to react. What's happening there? She's an amazing, there's a uh, documentary. Transgender powerlifter, Janae Marie Kroc, shares unbelievable, of course it's unbelievable. Look at, look at that lady's arms. I mean, now I'm, I'm going to be correct and call her a lady. She's toned down. She's lost weight. What is There's a documentary on her called on Tr Transformer. What's, what's happening there? And so she competes as a woman? No, no. She com competes as, as a man. Matt years ago. There's a lift named after her. There's like four people who have lifts named after them. The Arnold Prest, you got the Pendley Row, Deadlifts after Kevin Deadlift, and Croc Rose after Matt. Deadlift is named after a guy? That's a joke. <laughs> 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 Man, you are a boomer. <laughs> what is going on here? Look at the, go back to that picture again. Look, Transgender lifter, Janae Marie. Look at the, what is happening here? Compete for IFBB Pro. That's bodybuilding, Just right? competing so now, as a male. Jesus, I'm so confused. But then again, Eddie uh, Izzard was on here, and Eddie has been like the most open transgender person forever. And uh, he still calls himself Eddie. Okay. And he likes women. Yeah, so, she dates women. Okay. She just likes fucking them with makeup on and shit? I, I, I don't know how she fucks them. <laughs> that's the thing. What kind of chaos? <laughs> <laughs> She's a really interesting this is, person. This is Kali Yuga. I, I, That's what this is. I had her opening jars on my show for me. Oh, <laughs> I bet she could do more than that. It's weird to say she, because she's still clearly on uh, male hormones. Yeah. Clearly. I, I, we, we discussed that on the air. She does, I think she took estrogen. She did both, and it was kind of hard to get the balance right. 
because you have she to. She still does both. I don't. I'm not sure what Listen, she's currently running. Why bother? If she's competing as male, she's obviously going to be running tests at high yes. levels. Look at the size of her. Him, but that's smaller. She, he, dick or no dick? Did uh, you get dick. to the bottom of it? She has, she has, she has so that. what are we doing here? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> here's what I think. If you are setting a world record in powerlifting, I will call you whatever you want, mm. and I will respect you. Okay. You don't think that's a major accomplishment? Sure. I don't care if you want to be a girl or a boy. Yeah. I'm, I'm cool with it, but it's just hilarious. It's still hilarious. Okay. It's because it's a sign of the chaos of this moment in history. I do love the chaos. Yes, I know you And do. tricksters historically have been gender fluid. Loki mm. and uh, ah, all these figures, the coy point. Coyote, they always switch yes. genders. And, and Yes. That's a good point. So maybe it's a sign of the chaos of our age that there's more transgenderism. Or Probably, intersex but do people. you think there is, or do you think people are just talking about it more? I think it's there's so many pluses and minuses, and and it's it's such a weird, loaded situation. And I, I don't. I, I, the other thing is, if you are um, a guy who has feminine qualities, that doesn't make you non-binary. Just right. like if you're like a tomboy, yes. you're not. You're not non-binary. Of course, yeah. Yeah, of course. There, I mean, there, there's butch women yeah, who are really they masculine. They always have been. Yeah, there's always been effeminate men. Yeah, it doesn't mean you're... An, but that's also a thing that really makes uh, some gay activists angry because they're like, if you leave children alone that have these feelings, there's a large percentage of them that become gay men. And you're almost saying there's something wrong with being a gay man. You have to become a woman. Like it's almost an anti-gay stance. Well, do you know the with the world to interfere? The world cha the world capital of sex change is Tehran. Whoa. Do you know about this? Yes, I do know yeah. about this. Tell tell the story though, because well, it's no, really interesting they don't, why they have to do right, that. Right, because they regard homosexuality as depraved. Yes. But if you want to become a woman and have sex with men, that's fine. Yeah. So they make them basically have these sex changes. Yeah, and a lot of them just don't really totally go all the way through with it. Well, because they don't think of themselves yeah. as women. They're like, so, I want to suck dick, but I don't have a pussy. So they pretend to be a woman, but they don't really get the operation. Yeah. But they're trying to force a lot of them into getting operations. It's, it's a fucked up place, like in the Middle East. What do you obviously. think about this whole, you, you're more informed than me about international issues. I mean, for Christ's sakes, you went to North Korea. I, you've never been? Still? No, still. It's the new uh, Milan. Okay, that's what I heard. <laughs> Um, what do you think about all this crazy shit that's going on right now with Iran? I have a great book idea, and it's such a great book idea, I'm going to just drop it here in the hopes that if I don't ever do it, someone does it. And okay, the book so is you give it away. Yeah, I'm going to give it away. I hope somebody does this book. A lot of people do it at the same time and sue each other. Or No, you it's can't. It's my idea, bitch. It's, or some publisher wants to contact my agent, just give me a deal on the spot, I'll do it. Okay. Uh, Bloodlust. You'll do it. I'll do it. So it's not telling anybody about well, it. Well, I don't want to do the proposal. So okay. if they want to just make me an offer, <laughs> we're good. Uh, Bloodlust, the media's love affair with war. For 100 years, Spanish-American War, Willie Randolph Hearst, right? The sinking of the Lusitania. We were taught about yellow journalism when we were kids, back, uh, you know, in the 1903, blah, 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 blah. But now, it's not, they love war, they can't get enough war, Trump is only presidential when he's bombing Syria, they just are desperate to push the war drums. And what I love about, again, Tulsi, is she's served, and she's like, war, we have to start seeing war as a last resort instead of a first priority and a first response um and i don't know what's going to happen as a consequence of iran this guy as most people know Soleimani, was a huge deal like he was really revered in iran and very hated by people elsewhere but trump also started killing other people and like yemeni took somebody out and some other countries go they're going on a killing spree so it's i don't think this is going to be world war three at all because iran knows they can't win and I'm sure right now... Yeah, but you know they're doing exercises right now with Russia and China. Sure, let them do... Sure, ex we do exercises with South Korea every year, and North Korea freaks out, and it's like, okay, we're just... It's just flexing your muscles, right? Um, until I think very strongly, we're never going to be privy to this, that there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that we don't know, that people are talking and, like, what's going to happen? Mm, I'm sure. Well, there must be. But the, the idea that he was willing to just do that, and uh, that he ha even has the call, that he can make the call. Like, there's here's several options, sir. Right. Which one do you want to do? Oh, I want to get that guy killed. Well, I think it's amazing that we've gotten to the point where you're blowing up a wedding, right, and you're killing a lot of people, and you're killing just him and one other person. Is that what they did? Yeah, they only killed two people. That Like, the precision of that is something that's got to be scary to the Iranians. It should be scary to us. It should be scary to us, it yeah. It should be scary to everybody, because it's not like that can't come over to here. 
Oh, if, what do you mean? That kind of technology can't be used against Americans by another country. Well, it certainly I, could be. Frankly, if they're going to be terrorists, I'd rather they're taking out one person than 3,000. No, no, for sure. I'm just saying the precision of it. Oh, yeah. The fact that they have that kind of ability. Just, just the drone ability in general. Just the ability to wage war in countries we don't even occupy. Like the, all the different drone attacks in Yemen. Oh, yeah. And that are like really sketchy in terms of like the legality of it. Like what? It's not really a military strike, but it's definitely a military yeah. strike. I mean, I think we've been playing fast and loose with rules of war for a yeah. long time. And I think everyone knows this is nothing particularly insightful that war and the rules of war are written by the powerful people. I remember when people were talking about how much of a, a warmonger Obama was because drone strikes went up considerably from Obama, uh, from George Bush to Obama. And I'm like, yeah, you know what else went up? Drone technology. Yeah, yeah, like, right. yeah that's that has true. almost nothing to do with him. They're just getting better at bombing people. They he, know how to do it better. And this is something I've argued with people and wonder about. When you become pre like Obama was very anti war yeah. through his campaign. He was a big lefty. He went to all Ivy League schools, blah, 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 right? We know his culture that he came from. He gets in the White House, he's drone bombing everybody. What do you think that is? The question I have is do you think, and I'll get my Alex Jones hat on, do you think that they sit you down when you're president and they're like, all right, here's what you can be in charge of but here's how it's going to be internationally and i wouldn't be surprised if that's the way it happens i think there's no way until you get into office you ever really understand what information what you know what, what plans that they can reveal that terrorists have what you know what, what kind of i mean there's there's got to be some kind of intelligence that they receive that probably scares the fuck out of them oh yeah when you stop and think about how many nuclear bombs there are how many radical terrorists there are how many different sects how many people fight over each other how the, here's here's some photographs of a, a crime scene that we found that isis behead all these oh, kids yeah. it's like this is all real stuff that you they could show you and they go look we have done our very best to keep everybody safe but there's only one way to keep doing this we got a drone bomb yeah I, like, I, okay, I, drone away. Drone I know away. that many years ago, and I'm not supposed to know this, but I'll be all... Are you going to take something and reveal it? There was a nail bomb in Grand Central that they caught. And they, no one talked about no it? No one talked about it. Who found the nail bomb? The, the authorities, the right people. And they, they took care of it and nothing happened. But think how many soft targets there are. And overseas. I mean, Who that's what happened. the nail bomb down? I don't, I must have been what, at the time, Al-Qaeda, I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't have any further information. I'm going to question you further. You, you could question me all you want. I, I, you're going to have to Michael? waterboard me. <laughs> so me Michael, to get tell me the story again. <laughs> so there's this place, Grand Central, where the sky is backwards. Have you been backwards. to Grand Central? Of course. Have I'm you been to the spot where the bomb was left? Probably. How do you know where the bomb was left? I don't know. But if, since I've been throughout Grand Central, you I probably was everywhere. there. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Tell me the story again from the beginning. This is how they do it. And they eventually get you to Oh, yeah, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you I, tell the same story over and over now and over and over again. You yeah. adding shit to it. You're probably nervous, worried about dying. It's like scat, you know? You, the words kind of change a little over time. Yeah. Yeah, but you just lie. <laughs> you know, if you're a guy who left a bomb, Grand Central Station, they just keep getting you to tell that story over and over oh, again. Yeah, and then, then you're something. exhausted. And then they twist it around just a little bit, just a little bit for you. And then you agree with their twist. And they add a little more. It was like Stalin's right-hand man, Berius, said, uh, find me the man and I'll find you the crime. Mm. That's a real scary thing about cross-examining people. Like... And just examining, it just, 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 just interrogating people. I, I'm, I'm not saying that cops do this all the time, that they do get people to believe they did something wrong, but you can get someone to believe they did yeah. something wrong, especially if someone's like limited intellectually. Oh, yeah. You can talk your way into an arrest, but you can't talk your way out of one. Right. Um, yeah. and, it's, it's, and if they want you, there's, a, there's an old line that a conservative is a liberal who's been mugged, and a liberal is a conservative who's been arrested. Because when you get in that government's clutches, you're going to be very glad that there's the ACLU mm -hmm. and all these Miranda rights people who are like looking out for the weak and mm -hmm. want it as hard as possible for you to get arrested and go to jail. Fuck because yeah. it's just, think about this. It's like uh, being audited. Is it ever going to be nice? It's right. never going to be nice. Never going to be so nice. So getting arrested, it's not going to be, oh, we're sorry we bothered you, Mr. Smith. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, we're not your friendly country IRS. Right. Oh, yeah. we're friendly. Yeah, we're, we're just a country store IRS. We're yeah. Gonna, hey, I'm sure there's some sort of miscommunication. Right. We want to make sure this all works out well for everybody. I just love that. Here's I, a box of cookies. I saw some meme where they're like, here's how the IRS works. There's a number you owe. 
They know that number. They won't tell you the number. You have to figure out the number. And if the number you pay isn't the number that they have, they're going to get you in trouble. Yeah. It's like you have to read the game. (laughs) Yeah. They're just trying to prosecute as many people as they can. Yes. It's like people that pull people over speeding. Like, you got to prove that you didn't get pulled over speeding. I was pulled over when I, my Lyft driver at the airport was just paused. I threw in my trunk, got in the car. Within a s- five seconds, the cop was writing him a ticket. And I paid for half the ticket in the tip, and I couldn't believe it. And I'm standing, and the, and the guy's like, oh, you know, he's just, got a, he's just doing his job. I go, well, you've got a shitty job. Like, what kind of person are you that this is what you do? You're writing a 75-buck ticket for someone who's like a Lyft driver. No. And he's not even blocking traffic. He's not stopping anywhere. You're a horrible human being. Well, they have quotas. That's yeah. a real problem. Quotas are gross. I've talked to cops, and they have like a certain number of tickets that they have to write every month, or they're going to get in trouble. Yes, and it, to protect and serve. What kind of servant is telling me to pay them like money I don't want to pay? It's an officer of the peace stealing money. Yes, it's Wait, horrible. This is how they keep the peace. Yeah, yeah. Keep you scared. Yeah, don't steal money. Don't get Russian started on the cops. It's it's not going to end well. What do you think about all the Hong Kong shit then? I am so hopeful. Uh, for the people of Hong Kong, and I, th- I talk about it on my show Nightshade constantly. Um, my hope is it reminds me of uh, Poland 1989, right? In Poland 1989, you had this big labor movement, Solidarity. They weren't conservatives. They were lefties. They were labor. And they were like, look, the Constitution says we have democratic elections. You have them. There's only one candidate. Let's have elections. Let's have elections. And, the co- and Margaret Thatcher came there, supported them. She was loved in the Eastern Bloc. So the Polish Communist Party sat down and they're like, all right, let's have these elections. And then they were some t- a little bit worried that, well, what if we win all the elections? Because they asked the people, who are you going to vote for? Oh, the communists, the communists, the communists. The elections happen. The labor solidarity wins every seat except one. And the question is, are they going to honor this? What, are they going to wave it away? They honored it. And that was the beginning of the end of the Soviet Union. I don't think you could have Tiananmen Square today because Tiananmen Square was before smartphones. Tiananmen Square was before the internet. There's no footage. Tank Man wasn't killed. He was pulled away. Hong Kong, we're seeing the footage. And when you see kids getting beaten and tear gassed, you don't need to speak any language to look at and be like, something's not right here and decide with the people who are getting beaten. This is a very Martin Luther King thing. Like even the racists were like, I don't want these people to have dogs attacking them and water hoses. This is outrageous. Mm. Yeah. So I'm very, very hopeful this is going to uh, work positively to start the end of the you know, evil Chinese uh, dictatorship. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. And that would also work towards liberating North Korea, which is obviously my pet issue. Do you think that it's possible for China to ever turn it around, though? Forget about Hong Kong, but mainland China? Turn what around? What do you turn mean? what around in terms of their whole dictatorship? Oh, yeah. You Russia so? did it. The Soviet Union did it. But did they? Yes. Did they? Yes. Are you a puppet of Putin as well? <laughs> He's my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they kind of did it, but they're kind of a dictatorship right now. You can right? you can get a passport. You're not going to get your organs harvested. You know who got a passport? Who? Roy Jones Jr. Who's that? Roy Jones Jr. Who's that? Who the fuck are you, man? I'm, I'm a piece of shit who's never watched uh, the Snatched. Dude. <laughs> Roy Jones Jr. is one of the greatest boxers of all time. Okay. He won the super middleweight championship, went up to light heavyweight and heavyweight. Okay. He beat John Ruiz to win the heavyweight championship, a guy who fought at 168 pounds. Okay. He's a beast. Okay, sure. He's one of the greatest of all time. And he also has a Russian passport. Okay. Holla. At your boy. Okay, that's awesome. But Holla the point is boy. people can leave Russia. People can't leave China. And now they're going in a, in a bad direction with North Korea instituting their social credit system to control internal mo- migration, which is really, really bad. What do you think about people being able to uh, go back and forth? Like, like... Do you, what do you think about travel back and forth from Russia into the United States? I mean, they must be like watching every single thing you do. I don't think it's as pervasive. Uh, listen, you know what? They're watching everything we do here. <gasps> You're right. Come on. What do you think about Snowden being over there? I think I, I, I think Ed Snowden should be allowed to walk free. I think so too. I mean, and, and he, I, it's, it's insane that we drove him into the hands of the Soviet Union. And what he was exposing was illegal activity. He was By exposed. Elected officials. Stalin, in his wildest dreams, and his KGB, never had that power of surveillance 
like Ed Snowden revealed, that every single cell phone is being hacked into? Aren't they recording literally every call? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's and we just sit and we're like, oh, this is fine. Tracking, it's, it's just the level of, um, talk about right to privacy, the level of surveillance that this government is putting forward is insane. It is crazy. And remember when Obama and was evil. confronted about it? He's like, it's just metadata. No worries. Yeah, it's fine. Just trust us. Just metadata. Yeah. We're just collecting metadata. And he's and Swot Snow was like, no, no, no. I was reading people's emails. Right. Yeah, we all read emails. And there was some report. I forget her name. Like they were deleted. She was on her computer and you could see the file being deleted right in front of her. She, she took a, a video with her camera. Yeah, because she was breaking this stuff. Of course. <sighs> Listen, if 4chan can get into your, that hacker 4chan can get into your computer, they can. Of course they can. And of course they do. But it, I mean, it's... It, do you think about that before you Google things? Oh, that ship has sailed. That, that's, oh, that's going to be a problem. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a problem. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, there's an, oh no, that's another one. Mm. You ever go to... I sometimes, I'll, go, like, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and go on Etsy or Wikipedia, and you wake up, and you're like, oh, yeah, I forgot I was going down that rabbit hole while I was in the middle of the night, just like looking up random things. No, I don't fuck with my computer at night at really? all. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Because it's not good for your brain. Okay. Like you, you could go down, like I, I like to wind down at the end of the night. I'm, I'll occasionally check an email. What like time do you go to bed? Depends. Okay. Uh, if I'm performing, it's usually not until midnight-ish, maybe later, usually later. If it's on a Saturday night, like this Saturday night, I had a, a 10.45 spot. So I wasn't eating it. The show runs usually a little bit late. I don't think I went on until like 11. I was off stage like 11.15-ish. And hung out with my friends, so I didn't get out of there till one. I didn't get home till two. That's pretty normal for the comedy store. And then, and then I usually always write too when I come home. Huh? Yeah, it's usually uh, my favorite time to write. Everybody in the house is asleep. I'm a little high, you know. Pull out the laptop, start writing. You seem like a guy who uses Windows. Correct. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> yes, you use Android it. phone. Correct. Ah, ha, ha. I used to do uh, tech support in Windows so, oh, okay. on uh, Microsoft Office. So, I use uh, Windows for writing a lot because of uh, ah! Lenovo's, <laughs> Lenovo's keyboards are superior for a laptop. Wait, what does a guy who uses wait, what does a guy who uses Windows mean? What does that mean? What with you? Yeah. Oh, you're a contrarian in a lot of ways. But they're the most popular, aren't they? Uh, yeah, but not amongst creatives or people in show business. Oh, okay. You're kind of both of those. Sure, that's fair. Yeah, okay. You're fighting the fighting the trend. But you sound like the guy, guy, even if it was better, you would use it just to tell everybody to fuck off? Um, a little bit. Uh, that, that, that would play into my calculus. You, have you ever thought about going Linux? <laughs> I don't even know what that is, really. You don't know what Linux is? I, not really. I know it's uh, an operating system, but I, don't, I wouldn't know how to convert to that. I don't think it's that hard anymore. I okay. think the kernels that they have now, you can sort of install them on a regular Windows machine. You might even be able to dual boot. Okay. Can you dual boot with a Linux machine? Sure you can. Rebooting my computer is like the most scary part of my day, so I, well, I really don't like doing that. Lenovo's keyboards are so superior, and that's why I write on Windows. I, Their keyboards... Like a the ThinkPad keyboard is so superior to anything Apple has. The touch and all of them have like a scout, like a, a half moon shape yeah. to them. So your finger, what would you describe that as? What do you mean? Those the little semicircle. Things. But you know the divot. Concave. Concave, I guess. Yeah. The, you know where every finger goes, and okay. it's so easy to type that it's less effort. You don't think about it as much. It's far superior. I use plus. It's like a plastic, like it's carbon. I have an X1 carbon, okay. so everything is like a, has a soft feel to it. It's more comfortable to type on. Like people go for the Apple like industrial look. I have an Apple laptop. You know, I have I have another one, a new one. They're not as good. The the typing experience, like getting a thought down onto uh, a, a word file, right? You can do that better with a better keyboard. It's just that simple. And the fact that somehow or another we've gone for looks, for this aesthetic, this like uh, this sort of uh, modern industrial aluminum piece aesthetic over what's more effective is very strange to me. I have my keyboard looks like a typewriter because I'm a hipster. What do you mean? It's keyboard? like typewriter keys and it clacks. Really? Yeah. Oh, a round one. I have one of those. It's a mechanical keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have but that. It's like, it looks like lights up, so it's really but fun. But it also, you can feel Yes, it's concave. It's is. just like what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, they, That's they, so big, man. It's fun. But this is like, everybody wants the thinnest possible laptop, no. so you have these like real short travel yeah, keys. Yeah. And you don't know when you're typing. Yeah, well, it's not good. 
It's like, did everybody forget what a fucking keyboard's for? It's like, are you such a bitch you can't even carry something that's a half an inch thicker? The fuck out of here, man. This is nonsense. Like, you're making things thin for no reason. Like, the, the like, oh, it looks even cool. Look how thin it is. I'm in the future. Yeah, you're in the future where you can't type. The fuck out of here. Let's go back in the past and you can write something down that's memorable. I'm back in the past. I'm on my typewriter. Good for you. Good and for I love you. it. Click, 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 it's click. It's fun click. at night. Yeah, click, yeah. click, click, click. Yeah. Yeah, I have a mechanical keyboard. It's on my fun. desktop, and it sounds good. It's right. Like, it's, I, to me, that's kind of like I feel like I'm producing. Yes, but it's just so easy to know where the keys are. Right. There's no mistakes. Like, I had one of those 15-inch uh, Retina Macs, and okay. when I would write on it, it's like, geez, everything's flat. There's a, a really short, it's like half a millimeter of uh, key travel. So it's like click, 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 click. You make so many typos. Right. I make literally half the typos on a Lenovo keyboard. Yeah, I, I love my keyboard. It's It's awesome and i enjoy it do you run virus scans and all kinds of shit and do you cover your uh webcam with tape when you're beaten off uh i should start doing that i do run virus scans i do not cover my webcam with tape when you i wonder off. some fucking four can trolls in there let them let them watch maybe they get an alert whenever you porn gets pulled up in your browser like <laughs> ding, 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 and they run they're in their their parents house they're Mom and dad are screaming at each other, drunken slurs, and they hear ding, 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 ding. Oh, excuse me, Michael Mouse is jerking off. I've got to go. And they run down the basement and bolt the door shut. They're going to see quite a show. Imagine. Imagine if they found a guy dead because he was so excited to beat off, watching you beat off, that he tripped, falling down the stairs and broke his neck, ha pants half down, and, I and the cops break in to find out what the fuck's going on, and it's you. Jerking off on a webcam, and this guy's dead with his neck snapped at the bottom of the stairs, his pants half down. Well, given how many people jerk off to watching me jerk off, statistically, that's going to happen at some point. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Would you be excited? Yes. Would you? Yeah. That's awesome. I'd be like, that guy went out with a bang. Yeah. Like, my cum killed him. Yeah, for sure, there's people right now looking through, like perverts, looking through, somehow or another, getting through a webcam and watching someone. Oh, of course. Oh, for sure. Of course. Of course. And especially people who work for the government. They, they talked about that. I thought this Isn't was exposed. Fascinating, though, that they can do that. They're like, there's a little window into Michael's life. There he is. It's, listen, if you have a window into my life, the, it's the opposite of fascinating, I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is really, I'm, one, I'm about five minutes mm. away from being Terry Schiavo. What is this? Employees at yeah. Amazon's Ring have been spying on customers. Those videos around Christmas where they're like people were just getting on their cameras, talking to the kids, like, "Hey, oh, yeah. I'm Santa. Go tell your parents that this." And yeah, like, yeah. There's lots of them. This is uh, there's so much fucked up shit. I've heard shit. that. I've heard that that they were actually talking to people through the uh, mm. the device, and that one guy was terrorizing some woman. He was like like telling her he was going to kill her through the device. Oh my god! Yeah. Th that that's a crime. Y yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Captain Obvious. Jesus Christ. Oh, well, I got to upgrade. I'm a captain now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to be Private Obvious. <laughs> I, I, I messed with my friend really bad. There's something called like the an annoying thing. I forget what it's called. And you said it and it goes, hey, hey, can you hear me? And it goes off at random times. So I put it under her bed and I forgot. Oh, and then the next Jesus. morning I get a text that just goes, idiot. <laughs> and I'm, like, oh. I'm like, oh, yeah. She's like, well, now you know I'm an, you're an idiot because you terrified me. <sighs> hey, hey, can you hear me? Do you worry about apps like uh, Android apps being corrupted? Like they, they apparently don't have a stringent a testing. I don't have that many apps and I'm much more of a desktop person. I'm right. not on my phone that much because I'm like a recluse. Are you still a recluse? Why don't you get out? Do what? Outside is scary. You mean pe meet people. I don't ever meet anyone and I don't know where to go to meet people. Oh. Dude, it, this sounds like a Christmas movie. <laughs> Hanukkah movie. We're going to find out how to fix you. So there's going to be eight days. Seven days we fail. Yeah, we're we'll And then the eighth you. day, yeah. yeah like, get, let's get Adam Sandler on board. <laughs> Adam like, yeah, Adam. Adam. You really don't, you don't go out? I don't know. No? And it's it's kind of a for. I also don't get along with most people. I'm not friendly. I, I don't believe that because you're easy to get along with. That's confusing to me. But they're not easy to get along with. I think a lot of people are basic as hell and they don't bring anything to the conversation. There's a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah, you got to find better people to hang out with. You know how you do that? You go outside. I Jesus, bro. I have a good crew. <laughs> so, so listen, I'll tell you this. My friend Matt, the one who was molested, we had Friendsgiving. And I said, Matt, you have a unique opportunity to make this the most awkward Thanksgiving in history. Sit, these people all like you. They're, they're your friends. 
sit down and tell them that this happened. And he's like, I can't do it. I go, okay, how about this? I'll do it. If I do it against your, <laughs> if I do it against your will, I wouldn't really be wrong given this story. He's like, dude, and I didn't do it, but it would have been a funny. He's got uh, a dark sense a, of humor about that. A small amount of time would have been funny. And then he would have had to just deal with the weight of all these people. Which is also funny. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should stay as a recluse. <laughs> I take that back. I think you're doing good at it. <laughs> I do okay. You might be one of the only dudes who's mastered it. <laughs> yeah, me and the Unabomber. It's, it's your calling. <laughs> yeah, you to know, never be around other humans. Do you know what happened to the Unabomber? Do you know how that happened? The brother? Yeah. with Because he was a uh, pedantic. Oh, yeah, it was that. But it was also the um, the Unabomber himself, Ted Kaczynski, was yeah. part of the Harvard LSD studies. Was he? Yeah, they cooked his brain. Wow. Yeah, there's a documentary about it called The Net. Someone wrote a great tweet where they go, plot twist, Greta Thunberg grows up to become the Unabomber in a redemption arc. I'm like, that is hilarious. Because <laughs> he was a, vi a violent environmentalist well, and a very bright man. He's a professor at Berkeley. So he went to school at Harvard. They put him in the Harvard LST studies. They cooked his fucking dome, and then he disappeared. Went to Berkeley, uh, worked as a professor to earn enough money so he could buy a cabin and implement his plan to kill everybody who was involved in technology. So he'd stop this takeover of the human race, which probably is true. Yeah, uh, John Waters, the director, he has a replica of the Unabomber's cabin as a room in his house. <laughs> Isn't that great? I That's, love that. Who's got the real cabin? Oh, that's a good question. It was at a museum, I think, that actually just closed. So I don't know where it's oh. going to go now. There was a museum called the Museum in oh, yeah, DC. Yeah, New York. I think it just closed because yeah. they couldn't. Traveling the exhibit. Oh, Wait, they took it. the whole cabin and reconstructed it? I believe. I've seen pictures of it. Yeah. Oh. We need to find it. Wow, that's really cool. We need to find it. I love stuff like that. I do too. I did an article years ago about all these relics. Like, where's Monica Lewinsky's dress? And like she's got it hidden somewhere. Do you think she does? Yeah, I, the article that people did research. She still has it somewhere. Oh my god! What yeah. a nightmare for poor Bill. You get your dick sucked in '94, and this lady's still carrying that jizz-stained dress. Like Jesus Christ, lady, let it go. He's probably going, well. She's probably throwing it away by now. <laughs> no, no, Bill, never, never. Listen. Oh wow. Wow. So I, thought that was, I thought that was a replica. Mm, I mean, it says it was it, and it closed uh, last week. Yeah. So I don't know where it's at. Wow. At that is amazing. They closed last week? Storage, I missed yeah. it by a week? Yeah. Shit. That could have been out here, bro. Wow. We could have. That would probably be an expensive buy. Probably like me and Marilyn Manson the auctioning against each other. Too. <laughs> I guess we're just going to have to mail right. someone a bomb. He would probably buy it. Who, Manson? Yeah. Oh, is that, that the uh, manifesto? Yeah, original copy. Oh. That's the original? <sighs> Holy crap. That's dark. Everyone tells me to read it. I haven't read it, but they said it's very smart. I read parts of it. That's one of the things that's disturbing. It's just like well thought out. And also the argument is sound. Technology will inevitably lead to better technology, which inevitably leads to artificial intelligence, which is inevitably going to take over the world. Well, there's that whole singularity thing, right? Mm -hmm. What's the Ray Kur Kurzweil? Kurzweil. And I don't know, I haven't checked in years, but I don't know if we're on track with what he predicted. I think we're supposed to be further along. Because remember in the 50s, there were going to be flying cars and there's no flying cars. Yeah. He's a 2045 guy. And what he says is that the exponential increase of technology, if you follow it to... Right. The prediction is somewhere in the neighborhood of 2045, they'll achieve this singularity. Yeah, but I think they're also finding that there actually is somewhat asymptotic, and it does, at a certain point, you are having like physical limitations to increasing mm. the speed, and it's not going to be that easy. Yeah, well, then quantum supremacy comes along. Do well, you know they're trying to change the name of quantum supremacy because okay. it confuses people with white supremacy, and we really shouldn't support that, so we need to change quantum supremacy? They also, they had, was it IBM or whatever, had the quantum computer and the other people were like, this isn't really quantum because it's blah, 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 blah. Mm. This was a big controversy just I, in the last month. Those I, quantum people. I found its new location. After the uh, Montana Historical Society tried to get it, it now exists at this fun place. The FBI oh, experience? Wow. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus. Christ. They own it. So there's like a new Interdivisional museum. cooperation. Something. FBI. Oh dun, dun, dun. Just a propaganda house. Wow. Oh, God, so they wanted to get Mo so he was in Montana when he was blowing everybody yeah, there's up. Yeah, someone tried to buy the land, I guess, or it was for sale at mm. one time. But the, whoever runs wow. this museum tried to get a hold of it, and I guess the FBI said we're going to keep it. Yeah, I can understand why they would want to, right? Of course, yeah. yeah. 
It's wow. probably very valuable. People probably will go to the FBI museum specifically just to see that cabin. No one wants to go to the FBI museum otherwise. Would you go to the FBI museum? No. It's, it's his, his, bro his brother suspect that he was doing it all well, you know why? before the, the manifesto, or did he read the manifesto and then... Well, because the Unabomber, as a kid, was always annoyed by people saying you could have your cake and eat it too. Because mm -hmm. he's like, no, 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 it's you can eat your cake and have it too. And the Unabomber used that phrase, cor air quotes, correctly. And the guy's like, that's my brother. And that's how they figured it out, because he was being a pedantic dick. Oh. Yeah. So everyone who's correcting people on spelling on Twitter, shut up and relax. Oh, that's crazy. I thought he just recognized the style of writing. No, I, I mean, I, double check me, but I'm 90% sure this is correct. You're saying that now. Eat your cake and have it too. It's actually ringing a bell. Yeah. God damn. It is, it's but imagine like that if he was a normal guy and they just filled him up with acid and yeah. it made him say, oh my God, the technology's going to take over. And he's just started his... his calling in life is to kill the people that are advancing technology with bombs when you're that smart you're already kind of tripping because yes. regular people don't seem like the same thing as you do right and maybe a little schizophrenic and then they fill them up with a fucking half a gallon of acid like how much did they give them do you know who knows they were experimenting with people i'm sure it's not gonna be small doses do you know what you're... operation midnight climax is no it's one of my favorite fucked up cia experiments they ever did they went to brothels and they set up a brothel with uh, all these prostitutes and these johns and they dosed all the guys and used hidden cameras. Oh my God. And do you know what else? So, because the guys couldn't talk about it. Because like, what, what happened to you, Harry? Somebody gave me a Mickey. He slipped me a Mickey and I had a bad time. Where'd this happen, Harry? Oh, I don't know. I guess I was at the diner or something. You can't say, oh, I went to the whorehouse to try to get my dick sucked, and they gave me acid, these assholes. You can't say that. And we've been trained since kindergarten that if someone says the CIA has experimented on regular people, they will tell you, and admitted it, they will tell you with a straight face that that's a conspiracy theory. Yeah. They will just use that word and stop thinking. Yeah. And we've been trained for decades. And it's like, wait a minute. We've been hearing three years that there was a conspiracy between Trump and the Putin administration. That's a conspiracy, whether it's true or not. Epstein was a conspiracy. He was conspiring with a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, Weinstein, Bill Cosby, these are all conspiracies that are widely known. But if you, as soon as you hear that term, like racist, mm -hmm. oh, conversation's over. I don't need to hear anything else. It's oh, amazing. Oh, you believe in conspiracy theories? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What, 9-11 didn't happen? Come on. Yeah. Well, Grow the, up. We were talking on the last podcast about Epstein. And we watched, we looked at some of the autopsy photos and looked at some of the the, the accounts, especially particularly uh, Dr. Michael Baden, the guy yeah. from the HBO autopsy show. He's like, that guy got murdered. I got a question. Why is there no perp walk photos? Why is there no photos of him in court? Why is there no photos of him getting off the plane? What do you think? I have no answer, but isn't that weird? It is weird. Every other person who's arrested... You see um, the perp walk. Yeah, including uh, El Chapo. Including El Chapo, including Harvey Weinstein. Yes. Literally everybody, you've got footage. The, they, the media knows where to wait. Right. Why is there no footage of what him? What the fuck? I don't have an answer. But it's And the thing is to even say this, doesn't, this is weird, conspiracy theory. I, no, literally, tell me what, what I'm missing. Well, here's where it gets even weirder. You know that he was like visited while he was in jail by women. And like he'd have his assistant come to visit him in jail. I did not know this. Oh yeah, well, like sixteen hours a day, he'd get to hang out in the uh, like, wow, lawyer the special room where they would buy out all of the uh, pop machines and uh, snacks, all of them, and he'd just get to sit in there and hang out. Wow, sixteen hours a day. This is, and, and so uh, they were they were somehow or another either negotiating with him, or they were placating him, or they were trying to resolve this issue peacefully. They were trying to figure out a way. Like, this guy knew too many people and wasn't talking. And while he wasn't talking, they were trying to, like, desperately get to him, I would assume, and stop him from potentially talking. And then while the prosecutor's closing in, while they're making this airtight case, and the only way for him to make anything more lenient is to start singing, baby. Yeah. La, 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 la. What, remember? Probably in his jail cell at night. La, 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 remember la, 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 la. Remember all... Remember... Remember... Yeah. Supposedly. Remember all those Supposedly. files that he had mm -hmm. with all the people? Mm -hmm. Where'd they go? No one's asking. Um, Jamie's gone. Yeah. You got him? No, I mean, the, someone the FBI, New York PD. But why have, we're not hearing anything about it. He's got names of many people. Not just names, but videotapes yeah. of dudes fucking kids. 
it's just this is classic conspiracy theory proven true it's a class we all saw it coming but this is a classic conspiracy theory that there's a guy who works for an intelligence agency who compromises wealthy and famous sure. and, and, and even intellectuals famous people and then takes these people and say, brings them to an island where he brings in a bunch of girls that sure. are underage and they all fuck and then he films it you'd be like what are you even talking about right but this is you all think true that's real what about his, the fact that he's number two? She's like in, in Israel or something, isn't she? She's not been she's arrested. In Brazil. I Brazil, thought. okay. Yeah. She's not arrested. How's that happening? <sighs> how is Prince Philip not arrested? Yeah, how is she um, wandering around? Yeah. Like, how have they not whacked her? Right. Well, they had, uh, it's not right, but that part of the deal he made the first time was that he had, I think, at least four, if not more, co conspirators that are not allowed to be, or that's part of the deal is that they can't be arrested. How is he in a be. position to make deals? I'm not arguing yeah, with no, you. It no, doesn't no. make sense. Yeah. Doesn't make like what sense. leverage do you have? You're like mm-hmm. the, the, the world's biggest pedophile ring. And it's like, all right, you can't arrest my people though. Oh, okay. That's fair. Mr. Epstein, <laughs> sir. <laughs> we promise not to kill you in jail. I think maybe there's a concern that if maybe she, listen, if I was going to be the guy who writes the script, I would say there's a dead switch. Yes. And then if she dies, this shit gets out. And she says, listen, the moment I die, all this shit gets published. Epstein Powell. She's under guard. Jusain, Lex, They're under protecting her. Ex-Special Forces guard. Why does it have pictures of Michael Jackson? Is that like a... The pedophiles probably. Leaving Neverland. I think it's a different. Yeah. So oh, is it different? Why they're putting that story there. Oh. They're thinking the person <laughs> watching this is a pedoph- really into pedophilia. Must be. Algorithm. Very strange, dude. <laughs> yeah. Maxwell faces credible death threats and is being guarded by former U- U.S. You know Navy seals? seals and safe houses in the American Midwest. American Midwest bitches in Ohio. Yeah. In Shake Shack. <laughs> <laughs> or Sonic, <laughs> if she's lucky. Good Lord. I mean, it? all she has to do is dye her hair. People in the Midwest don't even read. They have did, no idea that she's there. Did you? Right? Am I right? They're not paying attention. <laughs> Did you see the, the Prince Philip interview? Yes. Oh, my God. So that was, strange. Oh, I loved it so, so much. So strange. It, he seems a little spectrum-y. Am I wrong? Something's not right there. Something's wrong, right? Because you're watching this, and, you're, and he's like, oh, yeah, I, you know, I, I cut off contact with him. They're like, well, there was a dinner in August. Well, I was talking by then. You were the guest of honor. Oh, well. <laughs> it was like, what the yeah. fuck, dude? Yeah. Yeah, he seems like he's a little detached from reality in some sort of strange way. Yeah. Well, like, you're you're a prince for that long. You're not going to be normal right. to begin with. Right. There's no way. Like he's right. you can't develop without trials and tribulations and become and come out normal, especially when you're not just a famous person, but you're a royal. Yeah. Like when they asked him about hugging the girls, I'm a royal. We don't, uh, as it were, hug. I don't sure, hug. Sure. The best I fuck through a hole in the bathroom. <laughs> the best part, what if it, what you want to say? Uh, the Kevin Spacey stuff going on doesn't seem directly related, but it doesn't seem unrelated in any way. Kill him with kindness. No, it is r- somewhat related because this is one of those things where things are open secrets in, in Hollywood and like everyone kind of knows. Everyone knew that Kevin Spacey was a dick grabber. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of like, then it's like, oh, you conspiracy theorists. Like, you guys are comfortable with this, you assholes. Well, that's a weird one, right? Because that's like... Uh, we always heard of the the wild artists that were d- doing things that were fucked up, but we kind of let them get away with it because they were really talented and yeah. there was no real proof. And what well, happened? Goddamn ad blocker, you fuck. Jesus. Uh, financier, financier Jeffrey Epstein once flew Bill Clinton and Kevin Spacey to Africa. Oh, Jesus. They, Clinton really likes Russian hey. roulette. He wanted to fuck the AIDS monkey. He's I like, I want to try. I, I want to be patient zero. I think I can fix it. <laughs> I can, yeah. I got that super Arkansas cum. I can shoot <laughs> it inside that monkey and start all over and again. And I make mushrooms grow. Hey. When I just on the floor. Dude, he went with that guy at least 26, as many as 28 times in his plane. But say, like, hey, I just flew a couple times, my friend Jeffrey. Yeah. We're friends. I, I had Juanita Broderick on my show, the one who had a rape accusation against him. And I mm-hmm. went in there hoping that she was lying. He raped her in the morning, and it was like half an hour. Like, she, he went with her to her hotel room in Arkansas. And it was, I thought it was like, going to be like 9 o'clock. They had a few drinks. No, she was supposed to be meeting with him about something. It's horrible what these people get away with. And I think Americans So are, you think he physically like held her down? Yes, he did. Her? And then he, no, he bit her lip just like a cat, 
to keep her from yelling. And then when he left, the last thing he says there, you better put some ice on that. And another woman who accused him really? of, I think it was Kathleen Willie, who accused him of forcing herself on him. He bit her lip too. And the two never knew each other before. They independently had the same uh, um, thing that he does. He bites her lips so they yes. don't scream? Or he just bites their lips because it's hot to get, you know, whatever. That's his thing. Oh, Jesus it's Christ. Off. The thing that Americans don't get, which they are increasingly starting to get, is that people in power are often really depraved. And they will use their power in sadistic ways, and they get off on not having consequences. It's well, not just being corrupt, like, oh, I'm getting a kickback for hiring my cousin. It's so much worse than that. And they're starting to see it now with, like, the Amy Rohrbach thing. Do, do, who's that? She's that ABC News reporter. The footage leaked where she's just like, we had the whole Epstein oh, story. Epstein we had Prince thing. Philip. Yeah. We had Bill Clinton. Yeah. And the lawyers killed it. And she was just – and she was, like, pissed that she didn't get the scoop. But it's right. – and she's like, I 100% think he was killed. And it's like, yeah, this is what they're like when the cameras are off. Right. Um, the, the Clinton thing is so fucking weird, right? Because you have Hillary, who was this woman who was going to be the first woman president. Yeah. And everyone was behind her. And we were all thinking that she represents hope and change and all the wonderful things that the progressives want. Sure. But then she's got this husband. Right. She's got this husband with a lot of weird accusations. Right. And when, when they had that debate and Trump brought those women yep. to sit out in front, I was like, no, he did. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, he didn't. Yeah. And Melania was wearing a pussy bow. Was she? Yeah, it's a certain type of knot. She had a pussy bow. It was a special kind of knot called a pussy bow? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, there's, a, there's a lot of fucked up shit in Jeffrey both sides. and I were tight. We're, he was a good guy. He supported science. Look at them. Dancing it up. There's Jacine. Is that how you say it? Is that her? Is that yeah. Melania? Jelaine, yeah. Or, I don't know. Jelaine. 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 Is that Melania? Yeah. Should That's Melania? I think so. I'm pretty sure. Oh, and who's that in the back right? That looks like Lady Di or something. It's Lady Di came back as a <laughs> photographer. <laughs> She's not dead. She's hiding with Elvis. She's hiding with Epstein in, yes. in, in Brazil or wherever he is. God, just awful, awful people. It's just amazing that you can still whack somebody as high profile as Epstein publicly in this day and age, that you could say, oh, the cameras didn't work. Well, oh, the guards, oh, they weren't around. We didn't hear anything. We just whacked Soleimani. That's different. It, it, in, in, a, in a way, it is. In a way, it's not. Because yeah, these people will do whatever they need to to maintain no, their hold of power. We think that these people are in control. Like, when we're, we're watching this, we, we, oh, we think saying. that the guards are in control and the prison's in control and they've got this captive and they're going to bring him to the justice system because the justice system wants to hear his case. Sure. They want him to testify. There's a lot of other moving pieces, a lot of players. We're very interested to see what kind of horrible crimes are committed by these elites that you know. And then all of a sudden he gets killed. But and So they do it right out in front of everybody's nose. What happened with Jack Ruby? Oh, same thing. It's just like how yeah. this is the most important person on earth right now to keep safe. And yeah. you're not doing it? Right. Jack Ruby just runs up and shoots him in the gut. Yeah. Bang. Lee yeah. Harvey Oswald, yeah. It's just yeah. like how is how are you letting this happen? Yeah. E- even if the, all the conspiracy theories are wrong, how are you fucking up so bad that this is allowed to happen? Yeah. Right there. Bang. Ow. It was like ow, it was a couple of days, wasn't it, after he shot JFK? It was barely a yep. week. I think it was no Look time at, that at all. Face. Well, yeah, he's getting sh- murdered. Of course, it's gonna hurt. We should probably get that. That's picture. what I look like when I'm beating off. By the way, that's the thing that really? people see. That face, yeah. Jamie, let's get that picture converted into a giant metal framed photo. All right. <laughs> that's a good one to have too. To mix. We're gonna have a good the... bunch of good ones in like a year and a half. It'll just be full yeah. Of Why not? History. Yeah, like a cool. like a yeah. museum here, man. Look at Jack Ruby. Looks like a piece of shit. Does ever anybody look like a piece of shit? Oh, wow. He, look, he looks like Sloth from the Goonies. Oh, he looks so creepy. Look at him. Hey, I did what I had to do. I did what I had to do. Jesus, yeah. Why, Just, did, why did he even say that he did it? I don't remember his excuse. It's not like the guy wasn't going to get the death penalty for killing the effing president. Yeah, but he was going to talk. That was what they were really worried about, that Lee Harvey Oswald was going to talk, and he's going to give up. Yeah, but Ruby's not going to say I shot him because he's going to talk. Yeah, but Ruby probably was under some sort of a, you know, he probably owed money or they were going to kill him. No, but he's going to say some reason publicly, right? He's not going to say I did this because I owed money. He never did uh, rat anybody out if it, if that was the case. I mean, he went to jail, and I think he died of cancer in jail. Okay. They probably shot him with something while he was sleeping. But it's just, he's going to have some excuse to be like why he did it. Give him a little cancer bug. Yeah, like the koala juice. Yep. You're going to have a koala piss on him, and then just next thing you know, you've got cancer. 
Yeah, I wonder how long he lived. I think he lived in jail for like a decade, though. That long? When did Jack Ruby die in jail? He died in jail of cancer, I'm pretty sure. Pulmonary embolism, January 3rd, 1967. Oh, that's, that's not, four years. That's not uh, Three cancer, years. though. Pulmonary it's embolism attack, right? you give somebody. Or is that yeah. a stroke? I think that's a stroke. Okay. Is it yeah, an embolism? embolism stroke. Yeah. yeah. So. You can give somebody. Oh, know. yeah. That Secondary to bronchogenetic carcinoma. Which that is cancer. I yeah. Oh, so you got lung cancer. cancer. They gave they doubled they gave up. Cancer had a stroke. Just he probably case. had lung cancer anyway. Everybody had Smoked, lung cancer yeah. back then. All those morons were smoking. It's a crazy story though, you know, that we to this day. Until that um Zapruder film got released by um Geraldo Rivera of all people. And um God damn it, what's his name? Who brought it to Geraldo Rivera? Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory, the comedian. Okay brought the Zapruder film to the Geraldo Rivera show more than 10 years after the assassination. So I think it was 12 years later. I think it was 75. And he and brings the, the Zapruder film that shows the, the head going back and to the left. And he, they censored some of the frames at certain points. I know, they, yeah, on TV? I, I know Zapruder didn't want a couple of frames. I was just, when, oh, really? I, I woke up one day recently and I saw that in the middle of the night, I was reading about the Zapruder film. <laughs> so Not you joking. wake up and just read about it? No, I, I wake up like, oh yeah, I was reading about this at five in the morning. Did you ever read uh, uh, Best Evidence by David Lifton? No, what's that about? Is that about JFK? It's, yeah, it's all about the Warren Commission report. He was like this really meticulous accountant. And uh, he was hired to do something with the Warren Commission report to go over it. And he decided to go over every aspect of oh, okay. it. And talked about all the different the contradictions and all the things that are wrong with it and it was his conclusion by the end of the book that president kennedy was assassinated and this is a conspiracy and wow he wrote a book called best evidence it's really good it's it freaked me out though i fucked up once and read it before i went on stage <laughs> 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 i went up and bombed oh. and, and this i was thing so about, freaked out like they killed kennedy and this about jack ruby it says that uh it took six months for them to talk to him and he had to ask for them to talk to him Wow, <laughs> that's amazing! He, he also, Don't you want to know why I did it? No, we're good. He yeah. asked to be moved to D.C. because he thought he was going to be killed where he was, I guess, in Texas or Michigan. <sighs> I forgot where he was being held. They just locked that dude up and said, "Fuck you." Yeah, good luck. He probably that. they probably told him, "Listen, Jack, you do us this solid. We're going to take care of you in the in the pokey. Going to give you a hose." We're going to shave your head, sneak you out the back door. You're going to live in Argentina with Hitler. Yeah. You're going to have uh, nothing but hooahs and steaks. Sounds and prime good. rib. And just whiskey and have a good time. What do you say? Jeez. He just ran up on him. Bang. He probably owed money. He probably had to do something. You know? And he probably they probably promised him the moon. Listen, this, we'll get You'll you right out of this. You'll be an American hero. We'll get you right out of this. You'll be an we'll American. Yeah. Temporary insanity. Oh, temporary. And he just ran up. Or no, like I was a patriot. You know, and yes. I love JFK so much, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Like, okay. Yes. No jury's going to convict him. Yes. I like it. Yeah. So there's a lot of, God, there's just, so many. Th I mean, that term is it just, once you realize that that term is used to just dismiss oh, yeah. entire schools of thought, mm -hmm. you realize just how pervasive our training is since we're kids. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's so many fucking conspiracies that turn out to be true. Enron, you know, go you get, get out across the board. The tobacco there's, industry. Yes. Yes. Did you ever see Merchants of Doubt? No, what's that one? It's a great documentary that showed how the same people that were literally the same humans that used to go on TV and d debate the uh, the idea that tobacco was cancer causing or that it was addictive. And they would go on these shows, these panel shows, and they were hired by the tobacco companies to go and do this. And they would go and just, it is not addictive. It's not addictive. It doesn't cause cancer. And they would go on these shows and just lie, right? And that, that's, the, that's the documentary. Well, the wow. same people went later. The same people were doing the exact same thing about climate, climate change. Huh. The exact same thing. Yeah. That's the amazing. The same human beings. Like, these people are merchants of doubt. Like, their job, someone hires them to go and do these talk shows and talk over people and talk really Wait loud and have some very strong points where you show these people that they're being foolish. You don't know what you're doing. Do you ever do that? Is that part of your job? What? Did I just string up? You said, wait a minute. No, no, like, I'm saying that's if, what I do. You know, if the, <laughs> if this, if this, the cigarette stuff's in the 50s yeah. and climate's in the 90s, how are they the same people? They were doing it long past the 50s. Oh, they were, they are were, you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were doing it on these talk shows. They would just have a guy who would claim to be an expert and this guy would go on these talk shows and just say things that are just 
is patently untrue. It's great, man. It's you a, should see merch. It's it's one of those things where you sit back and you go, what? Why would you hire the same person, right? What the fuck? Because he's good at it. Because people didn't know about the internet back then. Right. They didn't know right, that someone right. was going to make a documentary like this. They didn't know that it would ever be revealed. This is the same guy that was going on all these other shows 10 years ago, 15 years ago, laughing at these lawsuits. Saying, look, frankly, it doesn't cause cancer. It's not addictive. And then the doctor would be on the other end who didn't understand the fucking the, the, the hustle. Yeah, yeah. He'd be losing his shit. It is. I work for the Harvard Medical Department. Yeah, of course. You work for nobody. You know, th and they would have oh, these wow. merchants of doubt. It's a it's an amazing documentary, man. That's, it's amazing. That's very disturbing. Look at that, Michael Shermer. It isn't about the science. It's about me being a consistent team member, showing the members of my tribe that you can count on me, Michael Shermer. Skeptic Society. He's one of the merchants. He is. Because he runs Skeptics Magazine or whatever it's it called. Yeah. What is yeah. it saying? It says he's one of the merchants, I guess. You mean that he's like one of the guys that does it? Uh-huh. No. I don't think that's it. Really? I think that's what this is saying. No. Are these, who are these people that are listing here then? No. Well, scroll we, up. You could tell scroll us. Scroll up. Yeah. It must be contributors. Characters. 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 Okay. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily- Oh, they talk to him about, okay. About he's, skepticism. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right. He's, yeah, he's a legit guy. My yeah, he's a legit guy. He's not, he's not doing that. He's, he's right. probably explaining how they're doing yeah, it. Okay. Right, right. And yeah, how they're exploiting skepticism to yes, kind of, yeah. Because he's 100% for, I mean, he 100% believes in climate change. And he's a very science based guy. He's not right about everything. But, you know, he's also one of those guys that believes the official story always. You have to beat him in the head with it. And then, then finally. Wait, the head Epstein, of Skeptics Magazine believes the official story? Almost always. And then he comes up with some crazy explanation why it works and then with the Epstein one was the first one he said wait a minute <laughs> okay hold up hold seriously the it was one, one, literally one of the first times I've known this guy for like eight years it's the first time in all the times that I've known him that is actually said wait a minute hold on the film's missing <laughs> right. Yeah, right. This might be a conspiracy. See, he literally said this might be a conspiracy. Like okay. it was so blatant yes. that Michael Shermer, who has never met a conspiracy that he doesn't want to debunk, he got to that one. He went, "Oh, this one's real. They killed that fucking dude." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or allowed him to kill himself. At the best. Yeah, but the, even the the autopsy results are like the way his neck broke, like and the way the bones in his his face broke. Like no, like somebody choked that guy. Yeah. Somebody choked that guy. They grabbed a hold of him and they shattered his neck. I, I just think it's so interesting how it's getting harder and harder for them to keep a lid on what stunts they're pulling off behind the scenes. Yeah, and that's why we're going to need World War III. Because with World War III, there'll be much less scrutiny because people will be worried about contamination and radiation. And everybody that's in power will be in Dick Cheney's bunker down deep into the bottom of the, the hole that they created somewhere around the uh, Pentagon, I believe. Do you think that we're going to go to war <laughs> over this? I'm worried. I'm legitimately worried that one of the things was tw Trump made a tweet about if they attack us, oh, yeah. we will attack them with a disproportionate. Yes. And I was like, you can't say that, man. Because if you do do that, if you say that and then you do that, like what does disproportionate mean? You're going to just nuke someone? You, You're going to launch missiles into the, the capital? Like what are you going to do? I don't think if they attacked us that he would be in a space not to attack disproportionately back. That's what I'm saying. But even if he hadn't tweeted that. Right. I think but everyone would be freaking out so bad. he did tweet about it, it makes you go, oh, Jesus. Because he's threatening them on Twitter. He's basically threatening causing a war, a huge world war. Wait a minute. I think if you're killing their big general, you're already threatening them. You're definitely doing something. It's more than threatening. It's already pulling it's the after trigger. after the attack on the embassy and you can prove that, that guy's a connection to 600 Americans, 600 plus American deaths because of uh, IEDs that they, they shipped over. They don't care in Iran. That's not going to... I know. I know they don't. But at least it gives you some sort of a motivation for taking this guy out. Sure. Right? I mean, I've heard Dan Crenshaw talk about it and some other people make some explanations as to why sure. they needed to take this guy out and why it was a good thing. Maybe apologists. I don't know. I don't sure. know if they're right or wrong. <sighs> I just fucking hate it. I hate all of it. You know? I mean, I hate the fact that we get led into these goddamn things. That's the thing. Yeah. That's that this could thing. happen, that we people could lose brothers and sisters and friends and just all of it I, the most disturbing thing i've ever seen there was this like a, a group of four pictures of this little kid i remember his name timmy and the, it's like the first one he's like 
in his little camouflage, like holding up a photo of his dad. Then they made a um, like stuffed animal with his dad's face on it. And then he's like holding up a sign. It's like, I love you, dad. Can't wait to see you soon. Like the dad was dead at like 20. And they're like, show some support for little Timmy. I'm like, this is, oh, there's one of him kissing the dad's gravestone. Oh, and I'm like, Christ. this is not good. Like, yeah, we should support this kid, but it would be a lot better if he wasn't in this position. It's heartbreaking. And just seeing him cuddling with his dad's doll, oh. it was, it really messed with me something fierce. Oh. It's awful. And we need less of that. We definitely need less as, 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 as little as, po- as mean as little of that as possible. It's just heartbreaking to see. And he's just so cute and proud. Isn't it crazy, though, that you, you really only can say as little as, of that as we can? You can't really say we should have no war because no one thinks. Right, because humans are human, conflict but, and uh, animals that kill each other. But that's amazing. Yeah. That as much as we know, like our base of knowledge that we can extract information from is so giant. Our ability to communicate with each other is unprecedented. We can translate things in real time. Sure. And still, we got like, war is inevitable. Yeah, someone wants to take your stuff, and I don't. You know, someone else says I don't want you taking my stuff. This has been, you know, it's but it's gotten a lot better. Definitely gotten a lot yeah, better. A lot Unless better. We get nuked into the Stone Age somewhere around March. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Just in time for the primaries. No, I mean, it used to be, it was considered appropriate that if you beat someone in a war, you kill everyone. Yes. And now it's like, maybe we don't need to, like, literally kill everyone. They're like, oh, okay, let's, let's try that. Maybe. Or maybe you kill this general, and then they kill some of your guys, and then you kill a bunch of people, sure. and they kill a bunch of your people, and they say, if you do that again, we're going to nuke you. And they say, go ahead, do it, bitch. And then you do. And then Russia gets involved. Then China gets involved. Then Los Angeles gets vaporized. Well, th- th- so it has a happy ending. Oh. Son of a bitch. <laughs> well, you'd, you'd be out here with a fucking crazy suit on, and there'd be no one here to listen to us. A crazy suit? What do you mean? Some sort of radiation suit. Oh, okay. I thought you meant my clothes. Because <laughs> I got an outfit ready for when I'm on Ruben. Yeah, month. you have a fucking apocalypse <laughs> suit, <laughs> special tie. Apocalypse the combo character, yeah, dark side. Little atomic signs <laughs> in it. Yeah. I look like a new wave uh, singer. Look, it's kind of amazing that we haven't nuked anybody since 1947. Yeah. That's amazing in and of yes. itself, right? Was it 45? It was 45, Japan, yeah. 45. Yeah. Yeah, so we haven't nuked anybody since 45. It's, and no one else has either. That's what's important. That's amazing. Except for Russia nuking themselves, basically, with Chernobyl. Whoops. Yeah. And then North Korea, didn't they do that? Didn't they experiment in the, the mountains? Yes, and the mountain kind of collapsed. Mountain. But I don't think anyone died, so yeah. <laughs> L- I mean, look, look, knock on wood that that's all that happened. This is wood. You know, yes, it is. So, I, I mean, I'm very hopeful about uh, uh, the future of this country <sighs> and the world. How could they possibly iron things out with Iran? How could they possibly say to Iran, hey, we fucked up. We fucking I don't think he guy. thinks he fucked up. If Crenshaw has, Cren- if Crenshaw has his back, you know, to explaining this, I, I think he's not going to backpedal on this. Trump's not a backpedaler anyway. Right. But do you think it's possible that they could somehow or another work this out? Yes. Really? Yeah, because if, if Khrushchev and JFK could work out the Cuban Missile Crisis. Right, but JFK never sent a fucking drone to shoot down Khrushchev's number two guy. Sure, but at the same time, if you're like, look, even wor- in a sense, the sanctions and how we've kind of collapsed, my, my understanding, I'm not an expert, Iran's currency is also a huge deal and right. it has caused a lot of you know suffering there. So they didn't do anything about that. Mm, true, good point. At a certain point, you know, if you just your dick's big enough, the other people are just going to have to be like, shit, there's nothing I can do. Do you think that's real, though? I just feel like this one is so public and demands a response and I don't think they're not going to respond. They could respond in some way that's kind of like f- to save face. Now, how many, right. And right. Now, how many people do you think are in the Iranian regime that want change and that realize in- that the Iranian regime and their support of certain aspects of terrorism and the, the support of a lot of the stuff that they're claiming this guy did, including the, the IEDs, and right. this is all problematic because they brought this upon them by their acts and their deeds and that we need to change the government. Like that's really what a sophisticated intelligence society would want. They would want want to figure out how to infiltrate that thing, that organization and sow seeds of doubt and like let everybody know, hey, do you love your children? Because this guy just made a giant fucking mistake. It's all coming down. I can only look at it through the lens of stuff I actually am informed about, which is like North Korea and the Soviet Union. 
And what happens is these regimes, the people at the top aren't there because they're smart or charismatic. They're there because they're loyal. That's the first thing they test for. And everyone's always looking after each other to kind of be like, look, this guy's gone soft and they're getting rid of each other that way. That's the power plays going on over there. Mm. So if you have someone being like, oh, maybe we shouldn't do terrorism, all of a sudden everyone's raising eyebrows and being like this. Because if you're going to advocate for that, everyone's got to be on the same page because that's a big move to make, right? right? So if one guy's like, oh, guys, maybe this is evil. It's like, okay, now you're making us look evil and I don't like having this voice in the meeting. So it, I think it's going to be very hard to have some... But the thing is about this, this strike, because it was so precise... I'm sure they're scared also that he would have no problem killing them individually. That's the real fear. So it's like, oh, if I escalate this, he might be coming for me personally next. Mm. Or the people. If there's a, you know, a revolt, it could be like Gaddafi and you're being raped to death by like a broomstick. Mm. And they don't want that has, either. It was a bayonet. Okay, sorry, okay. I think it's a little rougher. That's than even worse. Stick. Okay, wow. Yeah. Jesus. Ugh. Remember that picture? Uh, no, I didn't want to look just, at it. He's standing there in shock. The guy's stabbing him in the asshole with a, with a knife. Oh, my God. Yeah. But I yeah. always said that that guy's going to be the Mount Iwo Jima guy of the future. You know? Remember the Mount <laughs> oh Iwo Jima guys <laughs> putting the that flag? flag? He's going to be a guy just ramming oh. it right up Gaddafi's ass. It's probably in a mosque somewhere. So, yeah, very quickly you're going to be wondering, am I next? Yeah. And then you also wonder, do I want to be a martyr? And, like, go out heroically. Well, you're, you're making all good points, but what I'm worried about is some sort of an attack on uh, on some sort of a public place, it'll, like, like a Disneyland. It'll be a lot easier for them to, uh, right, or Disneyland or hitting Israel. Yeah. You know, so they like, look, we hate them, blah, 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 like, or Iraq somewhere. Right. So who knows? What, what I mean, what they did with the Iraq war with the, when it was Bush and Tony Blair, they bombed the train station in Spain. And Spain couldn't get out of the war fast enough. So right. it could be that they're going after one of our allies to separate us. You know, that might be a smart move to do. You go for... It's a weird chess game. There's so many spots to hit. You know what I mean? There's no way you can really... Uh, it's like a shell game. There's only so many shells. Jesus Christ. Yeah. This doesn't I, make you nervous at no. all? No. But you're a psychopath, right? How, what, what do you mean? Aren't you? How am I a psychopath? <laughs> God, there's a lot of name calling in this. 2020, Joe Rogan's just. Called. I'm kidding, but you you're not ner all, in all fair. You nothing. You you really 100 percent confident that I'm not 100 percent confident at all. Are you 60 percent confident? Uh, yes, That's I'm it? very hopeful. That's it. Yes. So 40 percent might be the end of the world. No, end of the world. It's I don't think is on the table. At all? No, because I think what happens is Russia and China and Britain sit down with us and they and and Iran and they're like, this is how it's going to be. That's what I think happens. Really? Yeah, there's. I don't think it's. It would. We're at a point where we can escalate to a World War Three situation. Do you think Trump goes to that meeting fucked up on diet pills? Was he, does he just, take what, what? Not Adderall. What does he take? What they accuse him of taking? Oh yeah, ephedrine. What is it? Uh, Eph what is the, the 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 cold medicine that he had? Sudafed. Yeah, that's right. Who knows? Which is pseudo ephed. Uh, Pseudonephrine. Yeah, pseudo ephedrine. Okay. It's a, it's a. That's like a speed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he got the European shit, which is stronger. Okay. I, yeah. I'm, I, <laughs> I think it's very useful in negotiations when you, speed. when you come off as a lunatic. That's true. Because it's like, I don't know what I'm dealing with, and now I'm scared. That is true. About some, I, I wonder if he's being used in that regard yeah, by Yeah, as a wrecking ball. Yeah. They're like, look, why we got this guy? Look, we're out the fucking, he's going to get impeached. Yeah. So we, I mean, we can't support him forever. Let's just let this guy blow some people up and get get some of our dirty work done. They go, hey, we're real sorry about that. Never happened again. Yeah. Pete Buttigieg oh, Pete would never Buttig do Did this. Did you see him taking uh, hunk photos at the Holocaust Memorial in Berlin? Well, he is a hunk. <laughs> so what's the problem? No, these are like ugly while he's at the Holocaust Memorial. No, photo? these are extra hunky. Extra? Is yeah. He in his underwear? No, but he was looking all sexy at the camera. Fish, and, fish face? And, and then some, making fish lips? Yeah. And then someone's like, is that is that the Holocaust Memorial? And it was the Holocaust Memorial. Um, need to see that. Didn't he get accused of his campaign was using fake Twitter accounts? Is that true? To they attack probably... someone or something? Yeah, look at that. Look at that. That's the Holocaust Memorial. That's from his husband, mm. who's a school Is teacher. that from his husband? Yep. Make that larger. I don't think that's hunky. I think people are being nitpicky. He's standing there. It's a come hit. You don't think looking over your shoulder is a come hither pose? <laughs> Not to me, bro. I'm a man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
I don't think that's come hither. That's high. so. So is he, and so is his husband. I think there he could have been in the middle of the, the, saying something like, "This is insane. Look at all these what, people." That what died. does the caption say? What does it say? I love Dick. Did say that. This guy. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. And okay. The, my okay. my okay. friend Brian Mo- Moylan, who's a right, gay yeah, writer. Yeah, I think now I changed my opinion. Brian Moylan wrote an article years ago that apparently it's a thing for gay dudes to do this and put their photos on Grinder. So there's an article like, why are gay dudes taking pictures of the Holocaust Memorial? And putting what? it. This is a thing. You could look it up. What? Yeah. Why? The, was there a reason? He couldn't figure it out. But Maybe it's something you got to be in the culture. Maybe it's a conspiracy theory. Dun, dun, dun. Maybe someone tricked them into doing it, sort of like some sort of IRA thing. <laughs> Internet research <laughs> agency that does the things where they like fuck with people and get people to get behind certain causes. Because, Maybe uh, they trick gay guys into thinking it's really hot to take photographs because you know how Russia feels about gay people. They're not really yeah, thrilled yes, about sir. it. Yeah. So maybe they just like got into the community and they, and they do, by the way, have gay and lesbian pages and LBGTQ pages. Sure. Yeah, I mean, this IRA, this Internet Research Agency has hundreds and thousands of, eight, of different fake accounts that have a massive impact, uh, massive impact, rather. Maybe they did that. As maybe long they, as they got good memes, I'm on board. Maybe it's like the OK sign. Oh, 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 you're canceled. Maybe they turned the OK Uh-oh. sign into white power sign, <laughs> yeah. right? Then maybe that's what they're doing. Maybe they're convincing gay guys to give a hither come look in front of cemeteries and no, the most the, offensive places. This isn't places. the one. Just it's, <gasps> it, the Jewish Museum closet photos of gay men oh, yeah. at Berlin's Holocaust Museum. So that's a thing they do. Look at that one guy with his feet up. Yeah. Oh that's, my God. Look at the upper left. Oh, the guy's doing handstands. What the fuck, man? Yeah. How about that gay guy in the lower left hand corner? In the tracksuit, sitting suit? on the top in a tracksuit, just ready to sprint over some dick. Yeah, this is a thing. This was a thing. <sighs> this was a thing. It's six o'clock already. All we right. We did it. Three All hours. All right. Wow. Awesomely outrageous. Flew. Yeah. Time flew. It's fun here. My friend, um, do you have anything to let anybody know about? Uh, how to follow you? Just where to- Michael Malice on Twitter and on Instagram, and I'm still not verified. So what? F- fuck you, Instagram. How many do you have? Like 12,000, and Joey Salas tried to help me and didn't do anything. So they don't want you in. They, they don't think, want me. I'm think a, you're a bad person? I'm a piece of shit. But you're not. And a psychopath. No, these are just <laughs> jokes. Instagram, he's a nice guy. That's not true. Come on. You're not a bad guy. I'm not a nice guy. We were doing so well. <laughs> we had a, a great PR. I was playing bad guy. You're supposed to be good cop. I'm batter guy. You fucked up. <laughs> I All don't right. Hey, this is fun, man. Thanks, Thanks brother. Joe. Appreciate it. Bye, everybody. Oh, that, that was, was fun, dude.